Oh, yeah, we are live, y'all. What's going on? Pew, 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 pew. It is the Rumble on Rumble podcast. Up, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are excited. I am your co-host, FW Mike. You can find me at F period, W period Mike on Twitter. Also at Seahawk Comedy. This is my partner, the man with the plan. He is the liberal head hunter. So if you bring in that liberal stuff, he's the guy to come talk to. Uh, Mr. Pro 2, call DJ Protocol. Pew, 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 pew. Since, since I was told that I can't have the real one because I might get in trouble, you know, feel me? I figured I'd bring a nice little Nerf gun to the party because I'm a head hunter. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> truth is the most powerful weapon of all, as we know. Ladies and gentlemen, our man is in the green room. How are you doing? We're going to do a quick two minute or so. Uh, you were in a uh, 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 a chat with Maj Ture today. Is that correct, Protocol? Yes, 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 man. I, um, I saw my man had uh, the whinings, right? It's called the whinings, you know what I'm saying? He's, uh, you know, they sip a little wine, have conversations, real conversations about real things that's happening in these streets. And uh, I seen it. So I figured I was listening while I got myself prepared for the show today. And um, it was definitely a, a, a good room, a good conversation of a few people. And uh, we spoke some real good ideas and spoke some real good uh, word to the people. And um, hopefully they'll listen and, and take on, man, because we got to. You already know my heart is near and dear to getting to the ground, the ground level of people and getting them working and moving to sustain themselves. Forget the. um the government doing everything for you. No, they're supposed to do the select things they're supposed to do. And you're supposed to pick up the slack of everything else. You're supposed to watch them and what they do that you say they're going to do in your name. And if you don't like it, shine them boots up real nice, turn them sideways and get to work. We're kicking them out the temple. Amen, brother. Amen. <laughs> it's been a great week, been a blessed weekend. I got to see Jordan Peterson, Dr. JBP last night. Uh, it was amazing, man. He is a, a Christian on the next level, uh, you know, and and I, I love the philosophy and the high level debate. And this tour was called the uh, We Who Wrestle With God tour. And it mm. just had to do with um, uh, just had to do with that and just the relationship with God and how we get closer to God and all of that stuff, which excites me because the man, ladies and gentlemen, our guest is in the building. We're about to bring him in. There's too much to say from, you know, uh, you know, performed in front of a million people, sold a million records is, you know, literally laying foundation and living daily uh, uh, in a way that most Christians, uh, you know, don't even attempt to try to walk. And this man walks it right. and he talks it. But not only that, he's he's so talented. Love the movie. Just watch the movie again today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is my distinct pleasure and honor to bring a man who changes the game everywhere he goes uh, to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for my friend, your friend, the man with the power, hour after hour, Bryson Gray. <laughs> What's up, man? Thank y'all so much for having me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what up, little bro? What's up? What's up? What's up? 
chilling, God, chilling, man. Thank you for for being available with the time, man, to come and kick it with us, man. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad. I needed a reason to get off that Ryan Garcia Twitter space anyway. <laughs> How was that? Um. I mean, listen, so, so somebody I know wanted me to get on there because mm-hmm. Ryan, it seems like he's searching for the truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and he wanted me to get on there and try to like, you know, give him that real scripture. But a lot of times I already know that a lot of people, how can I say it? People only like the Bible when it's the parts they like. And most right. of the time, unfortunately, the parts they like are always out of context. It sucks mm-hmm. very bad that that's the case. So I had to correct Ryan quite a few times in the space. And then I stopped and somebody texted me like, why you stop? I'm like, cause I can already tell like Ryan, he's rich, young, famous, which means he's very full of himself. And if somebody mm-hmm. corrects him too many times, I think it can become a negative. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I, I was trying to stay quiet, but then I was about to leave. I was saying I have an interview to go to and I was telling people to repent. And while I was telling people to repent, he kicked me off the space. I'm oh. like, oh, well. And, and he talk he t- he talks all that Christian stuff on Twitter. He was mm-hmm. you know fun fact, and this is an exclusive for the show. I was on Facetime around Garcia a few weeks ago, and he was listening to my music. He liked my music. He wanted to do a song, and I asked him. I said, "You hear my music, right? This is real biblical stuff right here. You know what I'm saying?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And on Facetime, he literally said, "I'm with it. I'm 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 I'm, I'm with all of it. You know what I'm saying?" And uh, I was I sent him a song called Bible Talk, very biblical song. But see, now after testing the spirit, he not with it. I heard he was talking junk about me after he kicked me off, but he couldn't say any of that while I was right there on the space. Um, I'm very disappointed. But you know, sometimes when you when when, when you a babe in Christ, you early in your walk, you don't like hearing stuff that's against what you already believe. So mm-hmm. say, hopefully, hopefully he still continues growing. Uh, like I said, I feel like he's starting on the right track. A lot of people start in that position, but I, I was disappointed in the in the Twitter space. It seems to be. It's I don't know, man. It's it's a heck of a grift going on with the Christian movement for some reason on these like internet social influencer spaces. Like you had all the OnlyFans girls who are like, oh, I'm I'm Christian now and I'm going to stop doing this, but then you're like still doing this thirst trapping temptation pictures and you're hiding behind oh well they're just models it's like yeah nah nah. (laughs) this this is what i said even with the the girl her name is a nayla i think whatever it is a popular Mm -hmm. only fans girl that came to christ i tell people all the time if y'all gonna prop her up and she wants the attention Mm -hmm. ask her some real questions for real you know what i'm saying real like ryan garcia is popular ryan garcia wanted to do a song with me but when we got to that scripture I had to tell him about that scripture for real. Right. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. So, and I'm doing it because I want the best for him. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, so with Nayla, y'all keep softballing Nayla. She's going to think she's already a mature Christian. She's already telling other people they need to feel the salvation of Jesus. You've been a Christian two weeks. <laughs> How do you tell somebody else what they need? You probably yeah. haven't even read the full chapter of the Bible yet. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and I don't think she should be in the public eye right now, period. She need to be in, in, in that word, really changing her life. But if she's going to be in that public eye, uh, I think them spirits need to get tested. Because everybody, it is a grip. Everybody feel like they're strong. Hey, the grip is not claiming you're Christian. The grip is acting like you're a real mature Christian. That's mm-hmm. the grip. Mm-hmm. I've changed. I'm new. You know what I'm saying? But then, as typical, when we get to that testing them spirits, I think it. I, I, I think it shows the fruit show a little bit different. So, um, and I feel like more people need to start testing the spirits. Absolutely. Well, as long as real ones are out here, they're gonna get tested. You know, what what I mean? that's 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 what we stand for. You know, what I'm saying if you're gonna be claiming what it, what we respect and we are standing for, then bro, you got the man. You ain't no false claiming, bro. Spit your facts. Let me see where you at with your info, and we are gonna keep it moving. And if you find to be that. You can't spit your facts, then cuz you either drop it where it's at, or I'm coming. Listen, like I said, Ron is new in his faith and he's a successful kid. You know what I'm saying? Not mm-hmm. kid, he's an adult, but he's a successful mm-hmm. guy. So mm-hmm. when you fool yourself like that and you see how he tweet is, I'm really standing for God. I'm really for God. 
God is on my when he tweet like that, that means he is 100 percent confident in his faith, even though the knowledge may not match it. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not really upset because it's sort of what, you know, sometimes you have to go through that process. Uh, when, 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 when you're newer in the faith, trying to get deeper, you have to go through that process of it. Uh, I just hope some of it planted seeds, some of it can get to them. Um, cause I still think people like that can grow just, just, just yeah. like Nayla. I don't know what she's doing in her real life. Um, but I do not think all this propping her up and, and, and saying, we know her conversion is real for a fact. Like, and if you don't believe her conversion is real, then you're a terrible, terrible Christian. That's not helping. Right. Well, at all. And I, I think we need to be cautious and aware of infiltrators, you know, um, yeah. spirit of lust, spirit of sin, spirit of addiction is yeah. strong. And I mean, if you're trying to infiltrate trade Christianity, how are you going to do that? You're going to put on the, the, you know what I mean? The, the Christian, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The fake Christian Angel clothes Mike. and you're going to roll in and go, I'm changed. And yep. you're still leading a lot of people because. You know, men who struggle with that or men who may not struggle with it, but all of a sudden they see this woman, well, they're going to click on her. And it's only two or three clicks away from straight <laughs> pornography. Quick. And we I know mean, that. And we know the yeah. game. So, but yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it's, it, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's so sad, bro, because now basically a lot of people are following her that are Christians. Do you see what I'm saying? And like you said, if her, if this is all a infiltration plan, it's already working because she getting propped mm -hmm. up. She has had more conservative media than I've ever had. <laughs> right. Like, I've right. never been. I, I'm friends with Michael Knowles, and I've never been on the Michael Knowles show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and well, she's you're, on you're, there. You're not a you're not a pog, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. not a pog. So being that you're not a pog, you 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 know you're you're we down on the list, bro. We 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 kind of down on the list. You know, put 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 the big maga hat back on, and he might say, "Oh my god, he, he converted." He, the <laughs> Yeah, but it, it's just like she's getting propped up at a like crazy level, getting a new following mm -hmm. at a crazy level. And um, yeah, I mean, even if you go to her, you know, I was on YouTube live and everybody's like, check her TikTok. And I'm like, okay, check her TikTok. Like, if I was somebody new in my faith trying to get out of lust, her TikTok could pull you into lust if you're into that type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. And I was just watching, like, her, nah, this is no, 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 yeah. this ain't right. And I did this on live stream, just impromptu. And it's just like, man, people need to, Christians need to be careful. Stop. And, and the reason Christians are propping it up because they, it's this whole red pill versus Christian thing going on. And I don't get it because I'm going to just be frank. Everybody, know, just probably things was at my house. She brags yeah. about my wife cookies. Clearly I'm not anti just probably things, but the red pill community are degenerates. They will justify anything. The, 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 the fresh and fit dude crying because his friend got caught up with a prostitute. After y'all yeah. was talking all that big boy stuff on the internet. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So they are degenerates. They clearly don't like the, the, the Christian value. So why are Christians even engaging in this war with people that are clearly, you know what I'm saying, in this way? And I think it's making Christians like anybody the Red Pill community is against. Christians mm -hmm. keep propping up for some reason. It's the most weirdest thing. Yeah, man. It's, it's a, uh, What's up, Mike? I'm sorry, guys. I, I just have a quick question solely because you're in a uh, a specific place to answer this. Um, do you feel like the, the Groiper community has been infiltrated, for lack of a better term, or do you consider them now more part of the red pill, kind of the the what we are kind of referring to as the woke right now? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what's your thoughts on that? Groipers are just anti-women. Like, <laughs> it, 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 I'm not I'm not joking. And, it, and it's like not even... You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I vow because Nick Fuentes defended me a few times on his live stream. So I just said every time a gripper get mad at me, I'm going to block them. So I'm not like tempted to like debunk what they say or anything like that. But uh, a lot of grippers, they're just anti women. The, the problem with grippers is they have an agenda and you're either 100% with their agenda or you're, you, they don't like you. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, a part of their uh, agenda is literally being anti women. The only women they like is women that are like 100% echoing what they like to, what, what they like to hear. I saw that they literally like they really don't like women. It's, I, I think it's counterproductive to a pro-white movement because you need to reproduce, have families. You know what I'm saying? Um, so you know, I I just think they're kind of like anti anti women. So if anything, where like women like if women are mad at just probably things, I don't think rappers like just probably things though. Do they? 
No, I don't they're know. not a fan uh, of hers. They're not even yeah. in my sphere, so I couldn't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like her because they feel like she's, you know, she's fake. So you know how it is. Uh, hey, just her thing is cool, man. Um, I do think she's like a lot. Sometimes she's irrational, but she's a woman. So, I mean, Facts. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to expect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you know, speaking of of being out there trying to do our thing, let let's talk about some positive, for lack of a better term, grifting or positive marketing and promotion. Yeah. Uh, your movie's amazing. Your album is amazing. I, I personally think that you have outdone yourself this time around. I I don't. I think this is your best work to date. I feel like it's like watching the like I don't know. Last night, UFC, Max Holloway, which I yeah. knew when the kid was 16, 17 years old, uh, traded on a concrete slab, basically, by the beach in Hawaii. I got to hang out with him. But, uh, you know, now he's in his 30s and he just came back. And last night was one of the best fights maybe in UFC history, man. And you know what? I, I was thinking about you because it was, you know what it came down to? Boxing. Boxing. I don't know if you saw it. It was in the very yeah, end, watched- the last instant. Yeah. I, I, Boxing. I it was at the very end. It was like, let's stand and bang right here. And Max had to fight one. But yeah. it was all respect, man. It was beautiful, but it was boxing. I was like, see, Bryson could talk about it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's, I mean, it, a lot of times it comes down to that. Well, you know, Max Holloway, he like hails himself as a good boxer. You know what I'm saying? He's like, oh, yeah, best, I'm, no, best yeah. boxer in the UFC, best hands ever in the history of the UFC. So, yeah, that's, what, what, that's what he said. That's what but I, I did think that was gangster. Like at the last, yeah. at the last 10, 15 seconds, knowing he won the fight, instead of yep. playing it safe, he said, let's meet in the middle or just. And just bang it up, it just bang get it out. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, mm-hmm. I like the sweet science of boxing, but yes. it'll be so gangster like Devin Haney versus Pro Gray. Devin Haney had him 12 round zero, bro. Like, like the fight was yeah. over. If that last few seconds, Devin Haney said, Screw it, maybe in the center here, let's see what's really popping. It yep. would have made you know, say it would have been so gangster. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, even though I like boxing more than MMA, I would like to see something like that happen. And Max is cool. Mac, people don't know this about Max, but just because I, I, you know, knew him from a child, his nickname used to be Lil Evil, right? Max Lil Evil Holloway. And because he was that quiet little kid in the corner and everybody thought he was kind of weird. And then he'd come out and beat people up clearly yeah. when he was younger. But then he got saved and he was like, I don't want to be Lil Evil anymore because I'm blessed. And he literally changed his name. You know, it was it was before he got to the UFC. So it's been a few yeah. years back. But he's one of those dudes who, when he got saved, it changed him, and it, it changed the way he fought, changed the way he looked at life, and now look at him, one of the best ever. So just one of those yeah. cool little side stories that I wanted to share. So Yeah, yeah man. No, that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, I, I, watched, I watched that in uh, Pereira. Is that how you pronounce his name? Alex Pereira, um, yeah. Pereira, yeah. Pereira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His so. knockout was hilarious when he hit him with the... That was great. <laughs> <laughs> what more do you want? I feel bad yeah. for Jamal, man, because he uh relinquished the title. He got injured. And instead of holding yeah. on to the title and holding on, he relinquished it. But he got it. I just think, you know, it, you get caught as a fighter. You get caught. You you lay your title down because, you know, you're injured. You come back. So you're going to have ring rust. Uh-huh. So but you don't want to have to have a tune up fight and possibly lose that and then never get a shot at the, the title again, depending on. So you have to go in there with the best of the best as soon as you get back. And it's just a tough spot. So I think he'll be back, though. He'll he talked a lot again. of junk. He talked a lot of junk leading up to it. So I know. Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was quick you know. too. It, it, it went like a good fight to the last round. And mm-hmm. no, no, no. He got it. He got smashed very quickly. Went slept, man. I was kind of blow because I was in the middle of a stream trying to watch it. So we streaming live. I'm talking here. I'm looking down. I'm talking here. Look. And as I went up, I heard, oh, I look up and I see I see this. And I'm like, oh, I'm dang it. <laughs> <laughs> It was it was wild, man. So I I got to do a a mic. I got to catch up, man. The day's been busy, yeah. but tonight I'm running it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, and uh, I honestly feel bad for the uh, Zhang Wei Li fight because those girls fought hard. Yeah, they did. You know, their fight yeah. was a great, technical, brilliant fight. But even Dana White came out and was like, after the Max fight, um, and Gagey fight, like he was like the energy was just sucked out of the room. He was like, after that fight, everybody was just exhausted. So. Yeah, man, I want to check out the prelims. But speaking of fighting, man, uh, one of the best ways to fight is through chess, right? Yeah. (laughs) And I've been watching your your chess rap video over and over, and then in the movie, it's so cool. Uh, Actually, Hotep Jesus on his show did like a whole segment trying to break it down. 
and slow yeah. it down to play it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really I need cool. I to see man. that. That's what I wanted. Listen, in my mind, after I made Chess the Devil, I was like, bro, I think, I think AJ would really like this song. You know what I'm saying? Because Loved it. I'm actually, because he likes chess, like I like chess. And I'm literally going through like real chess players and be like, oh, this is a real game going on here. You know what I'm saying? So it's, I didn't know, I got to see that, bro. I got to see that. Yeah, man, I'll figure out. It was week before last. It was probably two days after you released it or day after you released it. And he literally played it. And then he like slowed it down on the show and tried to play the move out to kind of yeah. show you if you didn't know. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. you know, being a musician, if you tell me, you know, G to C to D, I know what that looks like. You know, I know what yeah. that feels like. Um, but I don't know chess like that. You know what I'm saying? But you, you do. And clearly he does too. So when you hear it, you know what that is. You know, like if I hear D3 to G4, I'm thinking literally chords in my head. Yeah. Like, but that doesn't work because that G's way too high for that D. So also, man, uh, cause the way we worked it out, me and pro kind of made a deal that I was going to get to talk to you about the fun stuff up front and he was going to get yeah. into the more deeper stuff in the back. So yeah, yeah, that was, yeah. um, man, I'm, you know, I got time. You but know, before you'd be we, uh, before we go any further man i just have to say thank you thank you thank you for doing the grifties thank you for showing up thank you for representing thank you for being you uh thank you for your yeah. kindness man and and treating us just like we were old friends just thank you and thanks you kind of what a wonderful young lady man she's in the movie <laughs> shout out to uh, you yeah. got the little clip yeah. of the movie what a shout out so yeah. uh yeah, yeah man she, my she, wife's oh, in the chat just saying what's up i gotta call her out real quick because okay. for some reason, when we get around Tyson James and them, she doesn't mind recording. She doesn't mind being on camera. But if I try to get her on camera, if it's just us, she's not doing it. I'm confused. Unless she just came in the room. She heard me. Uh, I said it on purpose. It's the, it's the lighting. She's got to have the lighting and the makeup. You know what I mean? She got to look fresh. I get it. Mm -hmm. It's fair. So, okay. So, um, I am diet like. Uh, just a silly request because I know you're always in the lab, you know, remixing and, and playing around with stuff. But um, I want to I'm dying to hear like a, a metal rap thing from you. That would be so cool. And I would love at least once in my life to watch you with the full band on stage, like a metal band, even just a three piece, like a Limp Biscuit kind of yeah. style thing. But you do it. You're like because your rap, believe it or not, in my opinion, not all your style because you have so many styles. But to me, kind of your core style is kind of made for metal like metal guitar like i hear so many of your songs and i can hear just a me you know da, 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 you know like yeah your style works with that so if there yeah. is there any plans like that Have you ever thought about that if not just so you know request i was i was looking i was just talking about this last week so I'm, I'm releasing a project called 777 where i like for seven weeks straight i'm releasing a song from a different genre and one of the genres i was interested in doing was metal but I don't like it's hard to find people that will pr do the production for me. Like it was, it, it was a little too difficult. I don't have that much time, but I do plan because I am going to release like a song every two weeks for the rest of the year, even after that. And yes. I was trying to find like something metal, but you know what I'm saying? It's, it's hard to really, I don't know, it's hard to like find it. It's not as easy as like other genres, I guess, because it's not right. like as popular as other genres, but it's not as easy to find people as it is in other genres. Do you um so if somebody like recorded because I, I got friends that like your stuff that play, you know what I mean? You know us us trailer park white boys, it's hip hop and rip. that's why the yeah. early two thousands was our heyday, you know what I mean? That was the best for us. So but um uh yeah, man, I'll have some guys send you some lines. You know what I mean? That might go to your songs, like a couple guitar lines. You could just listen if you hate them, whatever. Nah, but if you would, like them, yeah, man. I would love that. But I want it to be a real metal beat. I don't want it to be a metal mixed with rap beat. If I make a metal song, I want it to be like, I can add some like hip hop style in there, but I want to make like a metal song. Like I just made a reggae song and everybody think it's going to be like some reggae mixed with rap. No, 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 no. It's a reggae song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I paid a reggae engineer to mix it. Just like I got a country song. It's not a country pop rap country song no it's a country song you know what i'm saying so when i do metal i want it to be a metal song so i want i want a metal band to produce me an entire track you know what i'm saying heck yeah i'm excited i'm on it you know what i'm saying i'm gonna yeah. talk to my folks see what's going on in fact i just 
I got a buddy who is a songwriter um, and, and came from that kind of genre. So I'm going to holler at him because I wanted to see what you, what you thought about that. So uh, talk to us a little bit about Bryson Gray Demon Slayer. And it's mm-hmm. basically, um, for those who haven't seen it yet, it's basically like it, uh, uh, a concept album in a way. And and people, I'm old. So for people that don't know what that means, I mean, I guess Wu-Tang kind of did that in a way. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, uh, probably the most concept album famous in the world is the Beatles did Sgt. Pepper's, which yeah. was about a different band doing a different thing. Um, but it, it's probably the first Christian hip hop concept album in history, maybe. Yep. So you broke ground there. And then, you know, as a promotions guy, it drives me crazy how your promotions is like, it's it's on YouTube. I'm like, no, we need to do like a whole release, dog. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do it. But see, every time something doesn't work out, I just think it's God's plan. So like with the movie, like even my mom was like, you better not just put this out for free because I spent probably almost 20K on it. And it's like, clearly, if I put it out for free, the chances of me making my money back is like zero yeah. percent. Um, So. <laughs> But but I tried. Like I I literally emailed Rumble. I tried to get in contact with my connections through Twitter. Like I could premiere it on Twitter because nobody has done that yet. So I, I went through multiple avenues to try that. It didn't work. And um and then w- even with even with the album afterwards, I was like, hey, I got a few you know friends with a following. Maybe they can help push it. The fact that Hotep Jesus actually did that video tells me he's a real one. I hit him up in the DMs like, because I know he likes chess. I'm like, yo, will you would you react to this? When it comes out, I said, I'll even pay you like me. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't, you don't have to work for free. I know how it is. And you know what I'm saying? And he, see, I clearly, he actually did it. I had a few other people that said they were going to do it that are like super popular and none of them did it. Nobody did it. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, uh, I think it was God's plan though. Like I tried, like, you know what I'm saying? It's not like I just went with the movie and said, ah, whatever. No, I, I attempted to do something, but <laughs> it was it cool, man. Out. Cause it was, it was like, okay. So it was like, okay. So there was a movie that came out not too long ago called nefarious. I don't know if you saw yep, that. I, seen it. I see all movies. Brilliant. <laughs> You're like, I see all movies. I'm a movie snob. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it had flavors of nefarious. It had flavors of like, um, uh, matrix. Of course it had flavors of like, of course, like what's a great hip hop movie? I don't. It's hard to explain unless somebody sees it because there's so many layers to it, right? Yeah. And then also the way that it, the music told the story, the whole time. It was it was brilliant. Everybody got to check it out. What's crazy is we can check it out for free. My thing to you, man, and I know I texted you this, but I think we should do a director's cut watch party. You remember the old school DVDs? And when I yeah. loved the movie, that red box for the win. But anyway, the, yeah. I, I, I grew up that level of poor, man. Red box was the treat. Uh, but a double cheeseburger from McDonald's and a red box, man, that was a Friday that's night. How, hey, you sound like me. That's literally how, hey, no cap. That's what I was doing. You give me some McDonald's and we go, we hit a red box at a Walgreens or something. It's lit. <laughs> that's, that's a, or in a Walmart. Walmart. Walmart's always had red boxes. Yeah, and they had all the, all the movies. That, yeah, that was the good I'm, Redbox. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a computer geek, bro. Redbox where? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm always getting them from well, free. this is back in the day. <laughs> At, that, bro, and? Like, bro, I just follow. I'm trying to tell you. Do you, man, listen. He, he don't know, man. He don't know. He don't Wait, know. <laughs> I've been on free, dude, Freebie has some great stuff. I'm not even kidding. But Freebie <laughs> has, like, look, they have this one, like, history series. And it's just like about ancient Greece and Rome and how those gods came about and things like that. And I find that interesting. I love all history. So, you know, in, instead of just watching trash, having something like that on, uh, I enjoy because at least I'm learning, uh, you know, from that kind of thing. <laughs> Amy says, Tubi channels. <laughs> Tubi, Tubi for the win. <laughs> I try to hit up Tubi. Like, bro, I've tried everything with this film. You know the funny part about it being a concept album? That was literally not planned out at all. Like, like, bro, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what happened. Like, cause um, I feel like y'all are y- y'all are like artists in ways too. So I feel like you understand this. But you know how sometimes it just comes out of nowhere, but you just in your bag. Yeah. Like, you know, you just have the moment. Sometimes it lasts for a day. Sometimes it lasts for a week. And you know, you gotta really treasure it because once it go, it's gone for another Who six knows months. It's gonna come back. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So, bro, this album, you this was crazy. I made all of these songs in the middle of last year over the span of like two or three weeks. 
And every time I was making them, I said, either I just got demo ear and I'm just like feeling myself or I am making some of the best music I ever made. Because, you know, sometimes I'll make, you know, you make a song. That first one you made is dope. That second one is like, uh, that third one you like, not too good. Then that fourth one might be dope. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. This one, I made these songs like back to back to back. And I was sending them to my family, my friends. I'm like, y'all, am I tripping? Or I need all these joints fire. <laughs> so I sat on it for months because with music, you can think something fire, bro, but then you will sober up and realize it wasn't what you thought it was when you first made it. So, you know what I'm saying? I sat on it. So I came back. So, you know, I kept making other songs here and there. Then I came back to this stint of songs and I'm like, nah, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what I, in my mind, I'm like, I don't care what nobody say. This is all this is fire. So I told, I told, I, I told my dad, I said, this the album. And then, and then we was listening to it. Was it my dad or was it my wife? On the who was that was like the album sort of sounds like a, a, a story. And then I listened to it. I'm like, this is a story. Like if you actually listen to it, it's telling you a path. So I like switched up the, the, the track list to a few different songs. And I said, I'm shooting a movie. I said, because I because this is how I look at money. Be smart with it. But it's like music is so fleeting it's up and down music money or cre cre create money from creativity is so up and down and i thought in my mind i may never have the funds to independently shoot a movie ever again in my life you know what i'm saying so while i got it i'm about to do it and everybody thought i was crazy because it is pretty crazy <laughs> but, right, right, right. but i did it have i made the money back no but that was great marketing for an album, I feel like, at least. You know what I'm saying? This is one of my best releases I've had in, like, two or three years. So, you know, it, it, it was worth it to me, man. But this is, like, my favorite album I've ever made. And it's, it's, it's timeless, you know? And that's that's a, a good thing to say about your music, right? I'm, I'm Your music. When I say uh, your music, I'm talking Be Serious. Right. I'm talking about <laughs> I'm talking about the path. Right. Yeah. It's timeless because it's not you now, but it was you during a time in your life. Right. It was an age uh -huh. at someone in your life then. So now there's somebody who's that age who's looking at you then. And they're like, OK, I, I, I see the growth from him there, you know, 2006, 2007, 2008 to him, 2025. 2026 2027 i don't have to be stuck in my ways i can see that there's something that i need to have my eyes on at the end but i can still enjoy life at the at staying away from the of the pits you know what i mean because bros is yeah. giving me the pathways but i can at least enjoy life and i can be something better you know, so you know that's that's the great thing about your music, and I appreciate it. And I'm gonna we gonna dig into that later because you know yeah. we <laughs> we was booming around at around the same time, man. Uh, yeah, it's the music industry, and I just want to know your takes on that whole run. But uh, I'm gonna yeah. let my partner finish his thing before I snatch up because I'm about to ride. I guess I yeah. Got nah, you ready? Bro, thank you, bro. The, the most beautiful thing about the film mm -hmm. is like in the part of it, my testimony. Like I'm posting real clips for me. Like when right. I was like really in the world, like yeah. real clips. And um, I've got multiple phone calls from like when I get messages from like strangers, that is so awesome too. But I got phone calls from about this movie from people that I've been knowing for years. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, like some one of my homies hit me and said, Bro, I just literally just like actually pour my alcohol down the drain after watching that. And that like it's like the craziest thing I've ever heard. Like, what for real? Yeah, you know, I said like I don't, you know. So, so to me, it's like I don't know. To me, I don't view things in a monetary, a monetary way. It's like, bro, if the movie can influence people to do that, bro, that's yeah. what God. You know what I'm saying? It's free. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's gonna, yeah. it's gonna stay free. I tried to put it on Amazon, but they said no. I don't know. Man, we'll work on it, man. The there's too many places that need content. It just takes a little while, but we'll work on it real fast. Got to send a shout out to Cannon Hotep in the building. He was with us at the Grifties. What up, Cannon? Appreciate you for sliding, brother. He's he's supporting. We love you, Cannon Hotep. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, and it's good to see you back. He didn't stream for a little while, but he's back. We're glad to see him back. Um, yeah, man. I, okay, so my pitch. I'm gonna get back to my pitch. Uh, yeah. my pitch is this. That is, let's do a director's cut watch party 
maybe you charge five bucks like uh, behind your Patreon or whatever for people that want to watch it. I'll throw a little graphic up. If you like the graphic I did for the uh, podcast, I can do another one for a watch party. And we get to watch it along with you. And like a director's cut, you get to give us commentary. What do you think about that? I will have to see if I got any extra footage to do like a sort of like a, you know, maybe a little bit longer version. I have I had I had to trim it down just a bit, but um, I had to go do all the footage. I mean, I wouldn't mind that, but I wouldn't charge people. I wouldn't feel right. Cool. But I mean, we can watch like what you have now. Like we hit play and we watch it, grab our popcorn. We're, we're hanging oh. with Bryson and you, we hit play on the YouTube or whatever. And we're watching because I watch a lot of YouTube on my TV, especially like yeah. your movie. Me and my wife sit down and watch like date night. You know what I'm saying? Kind of yeah. thing. But we just play it on the TV. So that's the thing. So we just hit play and we're watching with you there. You know what I mean? And you're there and and telling us, OK, man, well, you know, in this scene, that are done in this scene it was tough you know like i'd love to know like people don't understand filming right like one of my favorite scenes was when you went with the homeboy into like the garage and he hands you the knife that he hands you a gun then he hands you the yeah. sword like that scene yeah. itself and shooting that you know what i mean and rolling in that one pickup truck and y'all chose clearly that pickup truck was a decision you know what I mean? Or just the yeah. scene, it opens with this demon eaten steak, bro. Yes. Like, like yeah. that's a brilliant shot. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's so many little stories and you could just you hit play what? and we could just all watch with you one night. And we would be hanging with Bryson telling us about his movie that he directed, wrote and produced. I might do that next, next, next Wednesday on YouTube, next Wednesday night. That is on fire. Yeah. That'd be so and funny. that home girl, that's gonna be free. But that home girl that was flown. What's that young lady's name that was with you? There was a young man, a young lady, and you in the movie, and she just started yeah. rapping out of nowhere. And I was like, oh my good. Yeah. Like I was doing other stuff at the time, like in my house, and I was like, oh, I had to stop and watch. I was like, what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so like yeah. everything was like very uh, is the word meticulous? Is that the correct word? When I was doing it, so like e even the way I introduced features in the song, I wanted to introduce the features. Like yeah, a cool way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 like with Tyson, a lot of people don't understand. Like, if you watch the Holy Smoke video, I just left the you know chess match, uh, you know, with saying, and the chess match wasn't finished. That's that's a no, very that was I was trying to figure. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, the chess match wasn't finished. I did it like that on purpose, you know what I'm saying? So, like it leaves some up to the imagination, you know what I'm saying. And also it wasn't finished because in reality the war had just started. So it can't, you know what I'm saying? It can't it can't be finished. And then it never finished. But I mentioned chess in a few songs after that. If you were listen closely, but the reason it's never finished is because it is it's, it's it's sort of already finished, but we're just waiting for Jesus to come back. So that's why I couldn't like it can't be finished with me, period. Because I'm just me. But um, yeah, but but like the the, the whole smoke video was after I left, it's preparation. We're preparing. For war, the song is yeah. called "Holy Smoke," and in the yeah. song I'm talking about war with like the world, but from a from a film aspect, the creative aspect, that is a reference to the war with Satan, and we're preparing for war. We're trying to find the remnant of people that's willing for that war, and and he was, and basically Tyson was my, you know, in movies you got the guy you get the weapons from, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. He was that, he was that guy. He had the right truck. I was at his house. I said, bro, dress like this. Like, dress, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to dress like this. If he had a hat that said pedophile hunter, because I shouldn't wear this one. So I said, no, 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 no. That's your character. Wear that Perfect. hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, he I looks said, scary, wear... too. He looks yeah. scary, dude. <laughs> yeah. I said, wear that hat. And uh, like, if you watch, uh, me and my wife had the bags. I was dropping my wife off to stay with him because I had to go yeah. fight this battle. Then I, you know, so all of it was like, it took me a long time to get this movie finished and edited and stuff. Actually, when I tell people how, how long it took me to edit it, they think I'm psychotic. Because I really edited it within like two months, like a month by myself. But uh, yeah. Wow. But um, but yeah, it was a, I don't know, it's the coolest thing I ever did, bro. I want to do more. I just don't have the, I can't do it right now. But, you know, uh, yeah. And, we working yeah. on it, man. There's so much more to do. And God has called you and you know, man, um, you know, I just, you know what it is, man. It, like, oh, yeah. The more that <clears throat> the more that I can turn on the news and then open my Bible to Revelation and they're saying the exact same thing. Like I was telling my mom, I was like, even if you weren't a Christian, even if you thought it was all just a big idea of uh, Fuego in the building. Hey, Fuego. Um, if you thought that 
it was all just a big joke. You can't deny, okay, this book that was written at least 2,000 years ago, I open it up, and it's exactly what's on the news right now. That's just weird. Now, if you didn't believe in Jesus, you'd have to go, at least that's weird. So, um, you know, as these end times come, you know, more will be required. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about what you're going to do, man, because it's such a blessing. And it's a blessing to be able to like parts of what we have to do, because parts of it is rough. You know that, man. You're always going to battle. Oh, so, yes. Oh, um, so basically, the uh, next once again, everybody can do that. And then Wednesday night, if you decide, let me know, man. I'll bang out a little uh, uh, I'll bring out a little graphic tonight when we're done and send it over to you. If you want to roll with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, be, it'll just be in your know. inbox. So. Like yeah, go to the movie and just like explain certain scenes because a lot yeah. of people really don't know chess. And some people think when I said the devil, the devil was uh white and I'm black, they think it's racial because I don't know. Wow. Because the guy who played the like, devil was white and yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah people don't understand that in chess matches, like the person with white, they call that person white. Like mm, white yeah. just went E4 or white went, you know what I'm saying? That's how chess the chess lingo is, but people didn't understand it. So. You know, I got to explain silly stuff like that, but, you know. The Devils lives in the OnlyFans servers, in my opinion, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, reason. yeah, so right now, currently, I feel like you're peaking, Zenith, of your career. We're definitely going to do more. But you said you have a couple new projects. One is the 777. Talk to us a little bit about those new projects you got coming up uh, uh, in the next, you know, that people can be looking for. Yeah, so the 777 project is it stands for seven songs, seven genres, and seven days because God created the earth in seven days. Six, but he rested on the seven, which was necessary for the completion. So that's why you still say seven. Um, and uh yeah, I like doing all types of genres, man. And uh, which is why I'm so I'm sort of happy that like a, a lot of my following now is mainly Christians that that like rap music rather than people that never heard rap music and like my music, because like a lot of conservatives did not like dance hall music, and I love dance hall music. A lot of conservatives didn't like R and B music. I like me. Like I like doing you know anything. I like music, so like I feel like now I just I just really don't care. So I'm just gonna make whatever I want to make. And uh, so I, like I don't know what I'm gonna release first, but I have a reggae song called New Jerusalem, and it's pretty much about um, Isaiah 65 and 66. But in the New Testament, is it is Revelation, Revelation 21. It talks about the the new the, the New Jerusalem and how there won't be no crying, no hurting, no evil there. You know what I'm saying? Um, people will be judged though. You know what I'm saying? And some people ain't coming getting into the New Jerusalem. But uh it's like a very um, you know, peaceful place with heaven and earth pass. And I have a reggae song about that. Um, I got a country song, which might be the softest song I've ever made in my life. But uh <laughs> but it's still about repentance, you know what I'm saying? It's just it's a country song, you know. I feel like rap is the best way to get out the wrath of God, you know what I'm saying? But um yeah, yeah. big got a, yeah, I got a uh a pop punk song. I got a uh, indie indie alternative song. I have an EDM song. Um, I forgot the others. Oh, I got a rap one too. Clearly, but it's gonna be different when y'all see it. Y'all gonna be like, "What the world? This is crazy." Uh, so it's a rap song, but it's some it, it's some it's some different. And I'm, and I'm doing it all to just like <clears throat> get my creative juices out, or I will lose my mind. But also uh, getting the word of God out in different in different ways about you know topics that people typically don't touch on. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, that's coming, and that's only like every it's gonna be it's one project, but I'm not releasing the full project until maybe the sixth week when I drop that sixth song or that seventh song. Uh, but every Friday, it's gonna be a new genre. Heck yeah, man, that's we're all up, over man. that. Yes, that's what's up, man. As, as a millennial, you know, what I'm saying from millennial to millennial, man, that that fits right into the sphere of what we do, you know, what I mean, like we yeah. we were hip hop and punk rock and yeah. country. Yeah, and pop, yeah, and EDM, like yeah. that is us all the way. So, like, you know, to hear it and it, it bothers me, man. That's that's one of the questions that I, that I really wanted to get off on you is is in dealing with just music. You've been dealing doing music since what two thousand eight, two thousand nine, nineteen ninety five. You 95. All right, let's go back to nineteen ninety five. You know, before the nine nine and four thousand, right. So to be doing it from 95 to 25, let's just say 25, because we're on the way to 25. 
How's that journey been from all those different genres and movements and and because every last crowd is different, right? That that um when you was a kid, 94, 95 singing versus when you was in high school, couldn't really get into the clubs with alcohol, but you can get into enough places to have your friends watch you perform. Listen, I know we, I know we could, because I'm the, I'm a DJ. I know, this, this, we, I, I, know <laughs> I, I know what it is, but you know, just from having to to get slid in to comfortably getting in, you know, to creating your own genre, right? <laughs> like, how has that journey been, like? Because, yeah, it's it's sort of unique. Because it's like it's there's so many different variations of my like life musically. So mm-hmm. of course I started off as a kid. I think my first official song I recorded outside of on like some random music studio software. My dad took me to a professional studio when I was nine. When I was nine, my my dad thought, okay, he can go to a professional studio now. <clears throat> and um, you know, letting people let letting people hear that music. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's just your friends, though, at first. It was very innocent, but I won Rapper of the Year in fifth grade in my elementary school. I won Rapper of the Year in eighth grade in my middle school. Uh, that, that's when battle rap was in. Everybody was battle rapping. High school <clears throat> is when I started gaining, like, real popularity. Um, Funny enough, when I was in ninth grade, me and my homie Luke, we made a song about McDonald's. I made the beat in, like, three minutes, bro. We, we made that song in, like, five minutes. And it went viral on the internet, like viral on, on websites that don't even exist anymore. I don't even remember the yeah. name. It was a website, like it was like green, black, and black or something like that. It had like a million views on there about McDonald's. And uh, my rap group was called Three Three Six Boys, and we was popular. We was, we was already we already had like a little name around the high schools. People used to play our songs. We had a, like you know a snap music was in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. McDonald's songs, just like was everywhere. Right, and that went to our MySpace. Our MySpace was getting like thousands of plays a day. I you know what I'm saying? Happened. Yeah. And, and, and then in tenth grade, we get a message from 106 and Park, and they're like, "We want y'all to come perform on Wild Out Wednesday." And um, next thing you know, we in New York City for the first time performing on 106 and Park. Wipe the competition. Everybody in the city was voting for us, bro. In, in school, they let people in school take breaks to vote. For, like it was crazy, bro. You know what I'm saying? And um, we won by such a wide margin at Wild Out Wednesday. They brought us back again for a all star event. Then we went back again for another. That's how popular we were um, on 106 and Park. And then our MySpace was just crazy. Now we getting paid shows where we from. Um, so we like we're we're going to places we shouldn't be, that we shouldn't be allowed in. We were too young. I seen a very lot at a very young age um, because of like I mean. Pro, you a DJ, you already know if somebody's mm-hmm. popping, they're getting in, period point. Blank. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah, so like I like I was I, I performed at a strip club, my rap group, while women was dancing when I was in high school. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's like real. no cap. And yeah. then um I was really popular for producing. I'm kind of lazy on producing now. And uh the, somebody at the radio station contacted me. Uh, 102 Jams in North Carolina. It's like the second biggest radio station in North Carolina. And uh, they were like, we like this one song y'all made. We we had a song called, Lord forgive me, Shake for the Money. And uh, it was like playing the clubs, no radio play. Mm-hmm. And uh, they played it on radio. Mix show. They thought it was going to be just one of those local songs. Took off. We had the number, I think you got to be like the number two song in North Carolina. Like it was Crazy. So now we're getting like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars a show. I performed at WSSU Homecoming, A and T Homecoming, NC uh, NCCU Homecoming. I'm talking. About we getting booked. We it, 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 at this point, we not rich, right? We making probably like five, six thousand a month, splitting it four ways. You know what I'm saying? But like when it comes so consistently, you just like whatever. We thinking it's over. We're the biggest thing popping. Mm-hmm. Label labels was calling offering like 20k. I'm like, ew, no, because me, I didn't want to be known as the twerk group forever because we were known for making twerk music, and I and I hate I hated that. And then yeah. we started beefing with Travis Porter. If y'all know who that is, Travi. Yeah, I'm from yeah, Georgia. Travis you already Porter, know. I know. <laughs> yeah, they used to make something called futuristic music, right? Yep, that was. There's uh, a website called spitchogame.com. You remember that, yep. bro? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. 
So this was funny. CEO Charlie, the owner of PitchOgame.com, mm-hmm. he wanted us to break into the Atlanta market because we were the guys bringing twerk music back. Before K-Stylist, K-Style, everybody, you had to go through 336 boys if you wanted to make twerk music. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so he wanted us to come out there. I didn't know why he wanted us out there at first, but he was like, I want you to produce twerk. I want you to produce twerk music for Travis Porter. I'm like, yeah, I put it all out because twerk, twerk music is easy to make. Now during this mm-hmm. time, during this time, Travis Porter kept saying they wanted to rap battle us, and in our minds, we're like, that ain't y'all style? Y'all make the futuristic, the swag on the honey. That's the type of music y'all make. Y'all yeah. ain't really, yeah, yeah. So this was crazy, right? We did a freestyle on spitchogame.com. It got so many views. We were snapping. It was like, how does Twerk group can rap for real? And I'm like, because we grew up in battle rap. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I can just, I can make catchy songs, but I grew up where you, you can't be good at rapping unless you run through 50 people. You know, you got to get, you know what I'm saying? Right. And um, so Travis Porter, they came to perform in Greensboro before they ever made a Twerk song. And they said they wanted me to send them a beat pack. So I gave them a beat pack when they came to Greensboro. It was a Dude, this boys Travis Porter event. But this just wasn't transport. It was gonna rap battle. We murdered them. We obliterated them. Ali from transport. He didn't battle. It was me and Luke versus Quez and Strap, and they just got murdered. They got so angry. They said, "F Greensboro," and they had got ran out. I next remember thing, that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bro. So next thing you know, they. We I hit them up like yo, y'all gonna use them beats? Cause I know y'all trying to break into twerk music. No response. Next thing you know, they started coming out with twerk music. It and was took, the most and cr- took Georgia by storm, bro. Like bro, so bro, <laughs> listen, listen. I'm gonna tell you something else. If y'all go to our old uh spitchogame.com interview, guess what? Protocol, you're gonna know who this is. You know who Roscoe Dash is. Roscoe, come on. I that. <laughs> I don't, you don't believe me. I've been 336 boys freestyle, something like that. <clears throat> Watch our Spitcho game interview. Go to the end. You're going to see a rapper there trying to get at the end of our video because we were so popping. His name was ATL. That was Roscoe Dash. That was Roscoe Dash before he was Roscoe Dash. We was cool with Roscoe. We was even cool with him when all the way Toronto started blowing up. He used to text me like, bro, Transporter, so mad at you right now. They're so mad at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> bro, so Transporter pretty much stole our whole swag. Had a better yeah. connections than us, took it them and K Styles, but K Styles was cool because K Styles, if anybody remember him, he was making the hands up, get low. Mm-hmm. See, mm-hmm. I'm gonna tell you why I respect him. If y'all type in K Styles 336 boys, when he came to North Carolina, he gave respect to the 336 boys. Yeah. Be- you know what I'm saying? Because we were the we who we are who brought twerk music back. And people don't really believe that when I tell them, I'm like, I'm not even joking. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um but after that phase of my life, bro, I was just ready to do different music. Like I didn't even want to. Yeah. I, I didn't even. I didn't even want to keep doing twerk music because I was looking. I'm like, they don't last. Yeah, it was. It was. Music. It was cheap bubble gum, man. It, it was, was really cheap. real cheap bubble gum. It was cheap, so we started doing different stuff. Whatever we wanted to do, and uh, God bless us again. We had a song called "My Team," back on mm-hmm. radio, back going stupid on the radio. You know what I'm saying? We back with now we getting like 2500 a show, 3k a show. You know what I'm saying? We going we go. Fun thing, I've never had a real I didn't have a real job until I was like 22. Right. Because I was always making money off music. But um you don't know yeah. like bro, man, listen that HBCU circuit is crazy. Yo, keep crazy. you paid like bro. Bro, crazy. So so we was back at all the HBCU performance off this song. We got a diverse fan group. We went on a fan tour. Like we were just mm-hmm. at, lose people at, at 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 parks and stuff. No, we we lit. Then we performed at Super Jam, which is the concert, one of the concerts in North Carolina. Super Jam. That's where all the big people come out. Anybody can go type in "This Is Boy Super Jam." You will see it. It was Future, Two Chains, a bunch of other Ace Hood when Hustle was popping, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was us. And we it wasn't no opener type thing either. No, 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 no. no. We were on the set list. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's how popping we got. And then um, this this is the scariest part, right? Capital Records called um what was the other record? Epic. Capital Records, Epic, and I forgot the other label. We had a three-label war going on to sign us. 
Capital said, everybody else offering you single deals, we offering you album deal. And I said, finally, something I'm willing to accept. We said, we with it. They said, I'm flying down there Sunday with the contract. Stop investing money because my parents put up a lot of money for us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Capital said, stop investing money. His name was Craig Davis. Anybody look it up? Craig Davis at Capital Records. Anybody can fact check this stuff I'm saying, but I'm about to tell y'all, y'all gonna think it's so fake. But if you research it, you're gonna be like, that's crazy. Sunday came. We didn't see Craig Davis. We were like, yo, what's going on? We trying mm-hmm. to contact Craig Davis. We already turned the other deals down. So we, we all we have is capital. No response. We're like, what the world is going on? So a couple of weeks later, Capitol Records came back in town looking for artists to sign for the 36 area. The radio station said, 36 boys, when y'all just wasn't y'all just about to sign them? Mm-hmm. Guess what we found out, y'all. Everybody got fired. The same week we were supposed to get a deal. Everybody, mm-hmm. including Craig Davis, got fired. In the way labels were, if that was that person's project, they let it stay with that person. Mm-hmm. So we were just like, it was like kind of heartbreaking because we like. So by this time, we like 23, something like that. So we've been mm-hmm. we've been a group for seven years. We've been so much working for seven years. And finally, we thought we had our final big break and it didn't happen. And then like soon after that, the group sort of like broke up because I was trying to make EDM music. Like I was tired of rap. I done, I done did every type of style you could do in rap. I thought, you know what I'm saying? My my other homie was like, he's trying to keep doing, you know, degenerate music. I'm like, whatever. I started making EDM music under the name King Vodka. And I ended up having music go viral on, on Vine. I was a generator. It was about getting drunk. I'm talking about stupid viral. I had a job working at a, a glass, a fiberglass plant where like 12 hour shifts off and on. You switch the you switch the way your 12 hours go every two weeks. It was, it was nuts. And I wasn't used to having a job. I'm like, oh, this is driving me nuts, bro. <laughs> and this song, bro, EDM song I made. One of the first ones I released, like as a full song. Went bonkers on Vine, went bonkers on Musically. If anybody don't know what Musically is, it's TikTok before it was called TikTok. Or TikTok, yeah. Yeah. And then we started making like five thousand dollars a month, and I was splitting it with the singer. You know what I'm saying? I wrote it, but he was popular on Vine, so I was like, you can have fifty percent, whatever. And I quit my job within seconds. I'm like, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? But bro, so I'm like, hmm, maybe God plan for me was EDM music, right? You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm going stupid. Then I dropped another song called Feeling Sounds. It didn't go as crazy as my song Stranger, but it was going crazy. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm out of here. EDM. I'm the next EDM star. So guess who I ended up getting in contact with? Craig Davis. Dang. He was going into EDM music, and he ended up being my manager. Right? Okay. I'm like, oh, it's over. I, I, it's over. I'm about to yeah, biggest thing. I'm, it's, it's a wrap. My, I talk to my mom and daddy. We out of here. Trust. It's a wrap. Because this is when EDM was like popping, popping. Mm-hmm. Bro, he called me one day. 5000 He said, $5,000 for a show? He said, yeah. I was like, a DJ in gig. That's how like EDM stuff works. I said, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, in Paris. I said, in Paris? He said, yeah, your song was like doing well in Paris. I said, oh, we out of here. He's like, I'm going to let you know something, though, up front. I said, what? He said, it's an LGBT event. Mm. And I said, nah, I'm good. And he said, right. come on, Bryson. They money green, just like your money green. You know yep. what I'm saying? I said, nah, I'm good. Can't do no it. Way no way it's happening. And he said, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to work with you. I'm your manager, but I'm trying to make money. You know what I'm saying? Which is reasonable. Mm-hmm. Over that situation, we broke up. Mm. Didn't have no other idiom song to go viral. Back at square one again. I'm like, bro, every time I get right there, something else happened. Guess what, y'all? I said, I'm going back to rap. I made a song called Slow Down. Back to have a number one song on radio. Solo this time. My first number one rap. It was like a, you know, it's a dance hall record. Number one song on radio again. Now I'm back again. Solo show. This is 2016, 2017. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, we are, we are, we are, we are, we are lit. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing stuff with the song. People making me promises about what can happen. It started falling through. During this time, I'm saying positive things about Trump. 
Mm-hmm. People at a radio station not liking it. Mm-hmm. People in the city not liking it. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to get a lot of haters. Well, I respond to haters a little different. Right. On the MAGA hat. Mr. Mr. DGAF, if you don't know who that is, that is Mr. DGAF right there. <laughs> so I thought I put on that MAGA hat, and it's not worse from there. I ne- haven't had a song on the radio since then. Just trust me yeah. with that. And uh, yeah. it's funny because uh, my mom, I remember my mama called me one day. She said, "Are you trying to be a musician or a political commentator? Because you can't be both." And I felt my mama was saying, "We done put yeah. so much blood, sweat, and tears into music." Yeah, I keep seeing success. And, yeah. You know, everybody thinking it's just a matter of time before I pop off, mm-hmm. and I'm and I'm and I'm just sabotaging my own career for somebody and most people I was like Trump who don't even care about me to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But that, so I wasn't upset at my mama, but when she called me, I said, "Oh, bet say no more." I ended up going right home and making a song called "Black Not Democrat." That's just mm-hmm. how I respond to situations. I'm like, if you say mm-hmm. I can't do something. I'm going to prove that I can do it. Mm-hmm. I went home, made it called Black Not Democrat. I just posted it on Twitter. And a few, I so a guy named Osega was following me on Facebook. I used to go live and mm-hmm. dare people from where I'm from. If I had any following, I used to be like, I dare somebody to say a place I won't go. Right. So I, I don't know who y'all think y'all dealing with. I, I And people used to post, so you won't go here with it. So I'm like, okay, bet. On live Pulling stream, up. Pulling up. See why I love a mic. See why we <laughs> click mic. Cause see, <laughs> that's that's literally how I started getting to follow those Facebooks. Who was like, this boy has lost his mind. But I'm from, you know, what I'm saying High Point, North Carolina, so it's a little different. Mm-hmm. And um, so he was cool, like some other people that was popping in the movement. My wife was one of them. Mm-hmm. They started promoting Black Not Democrat. King Face started promoting Black Not Democrat. And I'm like, road, man. I'm like, oh snap. So I showed my mama. It went crazy. But I showed my mama. I said, 10,000 views. I mean, mm-hmm. I thought I couldn't. You know what I said? Look at here. I could, I, you know. And then um, and then I did something called uh, Angela Stanton King had hit me up before we started beefing. And um, she said she wanted to hop on a song with me. And I said, uh, you, you rap? It was like, not really, but you know what I'm saying? I was like, I mean, this is after my, I, I went viral for the big red hat. And mm-hmm. she knew I was about to drop another song. You know what I'm saying? I thought I was about mm-hmm. a Democrat. And I was like, uh, I mean, I have one I'm about to drop. And it was called MAGA Boy. I was like, you can hop on it if you want. You know what I'm saying? So she sent me back a video for a rap. And I said, you're not going to record it in the studio? She said, I don't have access to that. So let's just like, can I just post it on social media my video? So me and her agreed, like, let's just do a challenge with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? A MAGA challenge. Mm-hmm. So we posted it on Instagram, MAGA Challenge. It didn't go crazy, but a few people was doing videos. But then I posted it on my Twitter, MAGA Challenge. It went bonkers. Bonkers. I remember that. Everybody CNN was doing- and stuff. Were, yeah, people were upset. The the left media mm-hmm. was mad about Bro, it. I remember Jimmy that. Kimmel talked about it. Caught me by my old rap name. Caught me be mm-hmm. serious on Fast and TV. Mm-hmm. And then they talked about me on The Breakfast Club. Then next thing you know, a week later, Donald Trump himself retweets it. Mm-hmm. And my mama, she's like, I'm not going to lie. This is crazy. You know, my, <laughs> parents, my, my, parents, my parents is like, my parents is like, why are you ruining your career for Trump? Like, who cares about Trump? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and even in the beginning, it wasn't about Trump. It was the fact that y'all acting like I can't support Trump and do music. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it's way deeper. Everybody kept thinking it was about Trump. I agree with Trump views, but it was deeper than Trump. It was the fact yeah. that people was telling me like, I can't do both. Yeah, Watch so, like, I have a, You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of conservatives think I was like a nobody before I was, before like I got popular in this movement. So they get very confused and don't understand this. But it's like, I'm, I was well known, well established in the culture of North Carolina when it comes to music. There's mm-hmm. no radio station you can go to in North Carolina that don't know me in any, in any, in any city. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I, it was to prove a point. That's why, like, listen to Trump as your president. It's reactionary. Yeah. We went to the White House. They was like acting like we were bad for going to the White House. That's what that song was about. Listen to MAGA Boy. It's about people acting like I can't wear a MAGA hat because of who, I, you know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. like, and then after that, it just took off. Like, everything I posted, like, in the political realm was like going crazy. I was making music about whatever I felt like making music about. I'm pro life. I'm making a song called Save the Babies. I ain't, I ain't even care. And then, I turned my parents into believers. They said, you know what? 
we we was wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, we, you know, we was wrong. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, politics, Trump supporters turned on me and started criticizing him. Right. And like we can't criticize, like that's what pisses me off with it. Because, like, out of everybody, like I know that it is something established. It's an established office. Someone has to be there. We need someone, like, it has to happen. Until people get their heads out their rear ends and truly situate the right person we all want to see in there, like, I got to pick from somebody if I'm truly going to live here. Now, I don't have to live in this country. I can find an uncharted island, and I don't have to worry about who's the president or anything. You know what I mean? I could just not worry about it. But as long as I have to pay taxes for my house, as long as I have to drive down the road, as long as I want to own a business, they're going to have their tentacles in my life. So I need to make sure that the best person that I can deal with is in there. Am I going to agree with everything? Heck no. Will I be able to rationalize with some things? Yes. Other things? Nah, bro. You tripping. You ain't tripping enough for me to say get the guillotine, but you tripping enough for me to goddamn going to get on this camera and say, bro, you tripping, and this is why I feel like you tripping. And I need other people, especially you red whites, to respect that because I'm going to be real. Like, the most gangster thing about black men in history, when pe while people have loved black men, like the the – the John Henry black men, because we we stand on what we stand on, and that's just Act. what it is. <laughs> and we gonna tell you how we feel. Now listen, the voting thing, a different conversation. But as far as yeah. everything else you just said, I do feel like that's a fact because here go the thing. I made my positions on everything very clear since the beginning, since inception. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody has ever truly. There's no way you can follow me for half a second to be truly confused about my belief systems. I'm not a like person that talks in riddles. I'm very direct, for better or for worse. So, um, when Trump started doing stuff that clearly I was going to disagree with, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And um, I started, I started, I started, I started criticizing him, and Trump supporters started treating me like I wasn't there January 6th, like I wasn't getting investigated by the FBI, like I haven't been in real life altercations over this stuff, like I haven't done a lot for the movement. They started treating me like I was mm -hmm. like. So then I realized, oh, y'all don't really care about my values at all. Y'all, a lot of y'all just care about Trump. That's, that's it. What, that's, that's what it, it is. So then, you know what I'm saying? I was like, that sucks. And then Trump started going more and more liberal on more and more things. And I'm like, okay, that sucks. I said, I'm just sticking to straight God in my music. And when mm -hmm. I say this stuff publicly, Trump supporters was like, your career is over. You know what I'm saying? That's what I heard all and all again. Oh, you fell off. Stop making Trump music. Fun fact, guys, I'm like literally now more popular than I ever was outside of like that Let's Go Brandon stint, but that doesn't count because it's like a, one of those type of songs. Mm -hmm. But like literally, like my following on everything has grown exponentially with mainly people that solely just care about Jesus. So, yeah. um, you know, that's the crazy, weird evolution up and down of my, you know what I'm saying, music career. Very weird. I've been dealing with labels and stuff since I was like, not in ninth grade, bro. It's just like par for the course. That's it. That's it, man. I look, I'm I'm here for it all. You know what I mean? Like again, I the we don't agree politically, you know what I'm saying? At this juncture, that's perfectly fine. That's not going to say that you're not my little bro. And if ever a point, just like in DC, when we got the word what happened at the restaurant, oh, what's yep. up? Yeah, what what's yep. up? Yeah. <laughs> hold on you know it's it's going to always be that like no Ask. matter what because i know that first of all you're a great man that comes thank you talk, and you want the best for your community it has always wanted that you know what i mean didn't matter where i was in life you know whether i was partying drinking or whether i am you know extremely christian and walking in my faith i have always wanted better for my people whether it's Hey, we're on as a you know, we own as artists, which means not the rest of you artists finna be on because now everybody's looking at us. We're in a position to put you in a place to, to be up. Um, mom and dad, you with me here in this music from the jump. You've always believed in me. We going in and put you on. Principal, you believed in me. You was telling the kids to hey, we're gonna take breaks so y'all can go vote. Like, I'm going to put you on. I'm never going to forget that. And like the, that's the making of real men that we need back in this country, across the board, yes. so that we don't have to sit behind and worry about do I really want to vote for this vegetable who don't even know what day it is? Or 
the dude who's really a billionaire philanthropist playboy who's just like, why do I have these two choices? I I, I should literally have a doctor or old principal, you know what I'm saying, to choose from in this position. And that's because, well, we have got to get back to men being men, leading our communities properly so that those men exist to be able to be chosen, chosen from. Like, yeah, I'm so glad, bro, that you said that. And I'm glad you mentioned that situation at the restaurant because that was... That was nuts. If anybody don't know what he's referring to, we were in D.C. and uh, I wanted soul food. I mean, a few people wanted soul food, so we're going to find a soul food spot. It's just, it's just, and yes, I had on a oversized cowboy MAGA hat and I used a Trump 2020 flag as a cape. Yes! <laughs> in a suit. <laughs> restaurant with this on i had a suit on though it was a suit no mm -hmm. it, it was just the big maga hat and the cape with it um and uh we went to this as soon as i hop out there was an altercation there's there's an altercation half of it is on youtube but um there was one guy like trying to thread me um but highly enough his homies though were trying to talk mm -hmm. trying to actually understand if you go to youtube i think Part of it shows us like having conversations with everybody there. You just sort of hear the one friend in the back not feeling it at all. Like, wow, it's mm -hmm. not really But uh, we actually had conversations with a lot of people there. It was a lot of case. It was it was crazy. The police ended up getting called. Um, and you know, I had to get up out of there for a specific reason after that. Uh, but yeah, it was a crazy altercation. But pro knows this. We've been through many situations like that. <laughs> Over this movement, yes. Over this movement, that is a that is a common thing. You know what I'm saying? When you in certain places, bro. Yep. Um. So that's just what you. I mean, that, but it's about standing up for what you believe in. Either you gonna stand it. on it, or or, or or you not. Like even like today, I seen a guy in a uh, Costco with a MAGA hat on. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm not supporting Trump right now, I was so happy just yeah. for the simple fact he's not a punk. Yeah. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah. <laughs> like you, you can really stand ten toes about yours because it's. As a at truly as a black man, like we see it right now with the young lady, Miss Michaela, out of Atlanta, the chick who hugged Trump inside Chick-fil-A, right? Yeah, people yeah. don't know this young lady works in politics, like she frequents the state house. She's an articulate young lady. Everybody, oh, they just paid some random person to come in there and hug Trump. It's like, wait a minute. Are you listening to what they're saying? What makes you think that we cannot be smart enough to put together a stream of thoughts in supporting a, a person ourselves? Like, it has to be, Charlemagne says, follow Joe Biden. So you're going to follow Joe Biden or you're not going to be accepted. No, no, no. It doesn't work that way. Um, and I've always told them, I told her, I told Bryson, I told Sharice. When, when I went there, like, I let them all know, listen. Don't be scared. It's different. You're going to get attacked, especially by our people. But yep. no, you got some folk who are willing to ride for you, will ride with you. But you need to be strong enough to stand 10 toes on your own. You Hit the bat signal. We'll be there. But I need bat. you to hold, <laughs> hold it Bro, down. I ain't going to cap. That's why after we left the White House, that's why like, whenever I was talking about going out to eat, I purposely kept the big hat on. Yeah. Because... Part of me wanted to see, because I knew King Face would have been, you know what I'm saying, King Face with Bro, it. with it. You know what with I'm saying? It. <laughs> with it. So a lot of these other folk, I was seeing if they was with it. I found out quickly, 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 quickly that not like a lot of folk are not with it. It's bro, scary, you cannot bro. be a loud, and I only like to say it like this, but it is what it is. You cannot be a loud black conservative and be afraid of conflict, bro. For real. For on real, either side, real. especially in 2024 now, because you 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 don't get hate from black liberals and hate from like a small sect of white conservatives now. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, to say not for nothing, but you can't be a, a proud white dude who's pro black conservatives anymore without conflict too. Just so you know. Just oh, so uh, you oh, know. we know. <laughs> oh, but oh. uh, bro, uh, if you say something, if you say something, <laughs> it's so sad that I have to talk about the right wing movement like this now. It's so right. it's so weird, but it's like even in the right wing space, if you even say something good about black conservatives, there's a specific sect of people that'll be on your head top, and it's like, oh my goodness, what? How do we get here? I I did want to get into. I saw you on an interview. I don't remember. This was a little while back. Um, 
but you were talking about, I believe it was J4 and J5. And, and I know protocol was around in that time roughly as well. And you mm. kind of broke down something that I didn't realize because if you weren't there, no one was talking about this, about how the night before, how they had like you guys and Antifa basically hemmed up in the same wow. space mm -hmm. with police like surrounding y'all. Right. Like they were trying, you know what I mean? Like throwing two mad dogs in a cage, basically. Kind no, of no, 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 no. That's exactly what it was. They had, yeah. Um, they put up the whatever the trucks, whatever the trucks are. They'll have it to where like it was a box. It was like a radius where box. Everybody was just walking through the streets because no cars come in and out. Period. Point blank. Um, and, and this wasn't J four, J five. This was like the um, the rally that before you had the million MAGA march. You had to stop the steel rally. And uh, I think the million MAGA march was the one that was the craziest. That's that's mm -hmm. when it was a box. So I was at the Trump Hotel, and they, and Antifa was an all black. So we we got word that Antifa was out there like knocking over people's Trump stands and all types of stuff. So we come outside, and the police said we can't even leave the Trump Hotel because like a hundred Antifa members walking just down the street in all black. You know what I'm saying? Soon as the Trumps, and then the Trump hotel was like, listen, y'all have to go. We're going to let y'all go after they walk past, but it's at your own risk. That's how violent and scary it was, bro. There was like, it was a like a four block radius, no cars in and out, bro. It was just people yeah. walking through the streets. It looked like the purge a little bit. It was, it was fun. <laughs> <It's> scary. <laughs> but I just, I want people to know, you know, there's so much still to this day that's just not out. And there's truth about mm -hmm. uh, those events that happen that, that people don't know about. They're still smearing and smashing. And the problem is, I, I really believe that I was telling Pro, I was like, we here's how you know the Republican Party is completely infiltrated, is that right now, more than ever, you see folks who have voted Democrat their entire life walking away and willing to go, you know what? The Democrats, they're ruined for me. And so mm -hmm. this is the time as the Republican Party, you want to pitch that big tent and go, hey. I'm glad, you know what I mean? Come on in. We're, we're glad that you're even considering us. Let's talk about it. Let's let you know where, you know, at least what our platforms are. And instead you have people like Charlie Kirk saying the dumbest stuff. And, mm -hmm. and, and you have these red whites that are, are, are coming out that are almost anti-black for lack of a better way to say it. And I wish I had a better way to say so, it. It's so weird. Why would you do that right now of all times? Why would you do that? I, I could almost see there. during BLM riots, being Anybody angry, Listen, red whites, I, but now, now I don't understand I, I think, it. I think it's money, and I'm against big tent. Yeah. I think the big tent thing is 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 like I think the move that Trump Kerry Lake is making is can possibly cause them an the election because the one community you don't piss off is the pro life community. That's yeah. the dumbest. That's the dumbest thing to do because pro life people will stay home. I know yeah, they will. Yeah. So, uh, and Trump and Kerry Lake are making some of the worst decisions I've ever seen in my life, but. Um, as far as the race stuff, I don't understand, but I can tell you when it started. It started when people started being allowed to get paid on Twitter. Mm -hmm. huh. And and I keep saying this, you think I'm playing. Elon Musk ruined Twitter. He ruined it. Paying people to tweet. That's why like people like people that get mad at me because I'd be like, oh, community knows be telling the truth. Because these conservatives be lying now. Whatever yeah. they have to say to get the clicks, they're going to do. Yeah. And conservatives are so like. All conspiracies are true to the point where you believe any conspiracy. You believe that mm -hmm. community else are lying. No, they're not. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, if you go do your research, a community note is there righteously almost every time. And I think when um we started paying people to tweet, you realize what gets the most clicks on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And by the way, for anybody on multiple social medias, this is only a Twitter thing, which is sad. But um, what gets the most click? Rage bait gets the most click clicks that, that that's what clicks on twitter what do i mean by that i don't know maybe if i'm a if i'm a popular influencer and i want to play along with this narrative that white people are being genocided maybe i would pay somebody to go through all world star hip-hop vi fight videos and find videos of black people beating up white people from a time span from 20 years ago to now and post them and comment as if they're current to rage get people in a rage mode to respond to it mm -hmm. and that's what twitter is now it's rage it's just like i want to play with your emotions and what that does you have i i gotta say i i listen i don't know I, i'm not saying this person is a bad person that i'm about to name 
But Elijah Schaefer is the prime example of this. Go right. look at Elijah Schaefer Twitter before Twitter started getting paid. He has never in his life tweeted like this. Matter of fact, I remember when Elijah Schaefer was scared to say bad things about the LGBT, DM'd me and saying like how happy he was to see me doing it because he's too scared to do it. This is a fact. I can show the DM. But all of a sudden, when Elon started paying people, now Elijah Saber just says the most craziest things. I was like, you're really just trying to be anti-black. Like, just, just, mm -hmm. just do it. And protocol know this. I've never been the super pro-black type. I nope. care about the community I'm from. I want people to do better. But I am not about to defend somebody because they're black. Big facts. Big that's facts. Why lot, that's, why lot, that's why a lot of pro-black conservatives don't like me. Yeah. I've never I do that just because you kicked it. With Nick Fuentes, I'm like clearly oh, yeah. He's yeah, yeah, way yeah. chill. Listen, I'm bro, I was with one of the grapers last night. We had a disagreement about Hitler, and yeah. you know what I'm saying. We had, but it was like a real conversation because a lot of them know that I'm not an angry type. I'm not getting overly emotional conversations. If you get over an emotional, overly emotional, I'm leaving the combo because I don't, yeah. I don't care that much. But yeah. like, it was a conversation. I was like, no, Hitler's a weirdo because of this. That's nothing to do with that whole thing. He's a weirdo because this other things he did and then the guy was like well i think ubi is a good idea i like socialism you know what i'm saying because people don't understand. yeah nazis like socialism it's literally yeah he was arguing to give everybody a thousand dollars a month and i'm like no i'm just i don't think that but the, the the whole thing is i'm just not the guy to just be pro race just to be pro race but i have to call these people anti-black what else can you call it right right <laughs> Like, like, and, and this, and this, this was not mainstream on the right. Charlie Kirk would have never said this two years ago. Mm -hmm. We never said right. it two years ago. Yeah. But everybody's saying it now. You and, and you have to figure out what's changed since then. When Elon started paying people, this became the most popular thing to do. It partially worked. A lot of white people started believing we're being genocided. Well, I'm not mm -hmm. white, people, but white people started believing white people are being genocided in America, and you know what I'm saying it's by black people. No statistics back this claim up. They Zero. don't care because, and I'm gonna tell you why it works. This is this is why psychology is, I think, the only like science with any validity to it. What happens is left wing media spent a lot of time painting white men as evil. Now, what people forgot to pay attention to is the main culprits of the people saying white people are evil or white men are evil are white women in the media. It's white women. They're the ones saying it. So what happened is they paint this narrative. And for a while, white male conservatives were like, I'm not racist. Or the Democrats are the real racist. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you're going to stop playing defense and play offense. Now, it's about how you conduct the offense is what matters. Instead of conducting the offense like a reasonable person, a lot of white cons male conservatives decided to get on offense by just becoming the people they claim to be against. So you think the media is anti-white, even though it's white people in the media being anti-white, you naturally, because it's about race, you're going to be pitting that blame on black people because you see a few black people like the Al Sharptons echoing the same sentiments. Mm -hmm. so you just become what you think they are, anti you become anti-black because you think they're anti-white. And this is the worst timing to do it because a lot of black people actually like Trump right now. Yeah. Yeah. But if they get on Twitter, like if, if every black person in the country would see conservative Twitter, Trump would get 0% of the black vote. Yep. If we just left it at Twitter. Yeah, and and that is and that's where I work, you know, so hard at now. And and I, I let a lot of black folk know. It's like, listen, I don't pay attention to a lot of the idiots on Twitter. Some of them I actually know personally, but I don't pay attention to what they got to say. Really, my worry ain't about them. My worry is about what are we building? What do we need to build that? And I'm gonna go over here. You vote for Trump. You ain't gotta worry about talking to them. I'll talk to them. Vote for him, <laughs> and I'll go in the house. And I'll take care of that. Now, if you want to come with me in there because you with the shits, then buy come on. Yeah. Come on with it. But outside of that, nah, man. Just don't worry about them. They're doing that to enrage you. Don't be enraged. Be enraged at the fact that 
we have this horrible music that is raising our children because we are, you know, uh, uh, co-signing it and saying this is okay and this is what our entertainment needs to be. No, help me build the entertainment we want to see for our family. Let's bring our versions, these new versions of the Huxtables back. You know what I mean? Let's bring back the living single situations. Let's bring back the the um. I hate to say a different world after seeing Kamala in them recently, but yeah. let's let's bring that back because we need those types of images for our kids. Because as long as we see, you know, a sexy red, a Sukiana, um, of like all of this stuff, they're gonna want to be that because they're rich. And right now, all kids, and I ain't gonna say all, but a vast majority of American kids are in very dire. Um, financial situations as far as family is concerned. And they just want to touch the money and be able to live comfortably and get their mama in a nice bed and not live on an air mattress like Glorilla said she was living on until she was 15. Which I truly believe that she slept on an air mattress till she was 15. I know the culture. B, you know the culture. Right now, we know some people who are down hard. Yep. So I want to get past that. And because I know that we can get past that, screw them. Let's focus on us. That's that's where. Well, it's and, so and and past that, of of all three of us here, I probably grew up the poorest. No father, no brothers, no sisters. Section eight, one bedroom apartment. Oh, yeah. Since I was five mm -hmm. years old, I was a latchkey kid. We had mm -hmm. you had to keep um, electric in the summer, so you had AC, but no gas sometimes. So you ate out the microwave, and we had gas in the winter because we could use the stove to uh, heat the one bedroom apartment. Because, you know, you couldn't afford both. So, mm. it, you know what I mean? It's, it's I, I say this all the time. It's like black poor people and white poor people's experience is very similar. Y'all just very do it with similar. better food and music. You know, other than that, it's the same. <laughs> so. it's, it's actually um, very similar. My first best friend. So, I grew up sort of like, I don't even call it privilege because it's the way people should be. I grew mm -hmm. up with no parents. I grew mm -hmm. up middle class. That, mm -hmm. That's why it wasn't Good. like, the, it wasn't the Good. high end middle class neighborhoods. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I could never stuffed on air mattress you know what i'm saying right right um and my i remember having to move roaches off the bed you know i, yeah, I came yeah, up I, with I, I you yeah. sleep and you Ain't hear the that. mice in the walls chewing and it <laughs> makes you so mad you're like Ugh. yeah you that's know what's crazy up, so. my, my first best friend his name was john john thomas uh he might actually watch it because i found out he has to listen to my music um he grew up different split parents were split yeah, they, 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 you know what I'm saying? They were struggling like this. My ass house, like they, they were more struggling. Like he had that, you know what I'm saying? That right there. And it's like, but you still get along. You still get along. Class, when well, you in the same class almost, you tend to have more in common, like with the people, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the issue with this movement is it's going to be hard to look past it. It's easy to get people to look past it right now. But yeah, you know right. the culture. I know the culture. And we know how they react to racial stuff. Yeah, boy. The, the only good thing going for trump right now is there hasn't been some widespread mainstream media event focusing on the right wing twitter space right now yeah the problem is a lot of these people are getting very very popular mm -hmm. to the point to the point it's only a matter of time some of the stuff i see from twitter accounts with 700k in a right wing space who one thing you never hear me use is the phrase racist yeah, but sometimes I be seeing some of these tweets and I'll be like, please don't make me use this. I hate the word racist. Do right. not make me out of all people use this stupid word. But you are the epitome of it right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. it's it's soft for me because now a lot of people are like Bryson pro black. I'm like, what are you talking about? Do you even know who I am? Bro, right. I am pro intelligent and anti-stupid. And if, if if you want me to co-sign what you're saying right now, that'd be crazy. Like that's mm -hmm. I feel like if somebody co sign this, like some of the stuff I see, I'd be like, see, if I co-sign this, I would completely accept being called one of the names, the coon mm -hmm. I would accept it if I were to co-sign something that's crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and it's not, and it's some of us over there that'll do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> me, I, I look, bro, I'm low. I'm no. No, this M M. I saw somebody in the chat earlier. They was talking about my flag. Well, what's with the red, black, and green? Blah 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 blah. Because I believe in the teachings of Garvey. Like, do I believe in everything that? Yeah. Like, I don't believe. I don't. There is no man who I just a hundred percent agree and believe in everything that he says with full stop. But I do believe that the black community should come together. We shouldn't be just killing each other's off. We should be building each other up. I do believe that. I do believe in black economics. 
Hell yes. I believe that because guess what? If the black, one thing you know about economics is you have to trade for something. You're, you're just going to have to trade. It's, it's just going to happen, right? So if the black sphere of economics is on point, then they can trade and you don't have to worry about living in squalor and people being down bad because your economic block is on point. I believe in education. Like I'm from Savannah, Georgia. I know that there were natives, blacks, dark skin people who lived here. When James Oglethorpe got here, he met us here. Right. And I also know that there were slaves who was brought into our river port here. I know that both things exist. All right. I want that history taught. I don't want someone hiding by. No, 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 that, that didn't happen here. Everybody lived here all peachy keen. Now, th there's caveats to that because Savannah, Georgia, because and I, I need people to take this because there were blacks already here. When James Oglethorpe started the city of Savannah, Georgia, look this up. Slavery was illegal. No one could own a slave in Savannah, Georgia. The 13th colony was established with slavery being illegal. Okay? So now, I need that history taught. I don't need my kids in Savannah believing, oh, yeah, the whole time we've been here, you know, we've been enslaved. Well, no, that's not the soil that you stand on. The soil that you stand on is completely different. That's what it was started for. Now, did they kick out? James Oglethorpe and eventually bring in slavery? Absolutely. It was too big of an economic driver in the world. Too big in the world for it not to be here. But that great, that grace, that blessing that God seen upon Savannah, Georgia, to not have slavery in the beginning, got us through that period. And since then, we don't have major disasters here. We'll have hurricanes that's supposed to come right to us. And that bad boy will veer off and go right into South Carolina and into North Carolina and own it pop. And Savannah will be blessed. This is a blessed land. This is some blessed dirt right here. And I need that history taught. So if I'm going to stand behind again, all of that being in these principles, I'm going to do it. And it's going, to re it's going to resonate with the people who I need to know. And I don't care about someone getting on my Twitter space, bro. Drop the Addy. Drop the Addy. Or you can meet me at any of these events that I'm going to be at because I'm going to be there. And just come correct because I'm telling you not. I love to say what I want to say because that's the 1A. But I can back it up because that 2 right behind you. Heard? <laughs> hey, I, I, I'm going to say this. Cause I come from a lot of Black Panthers. Mm -hmm. If people, because the whole Gwepper stuff is getting mainstream now, if you see no problem with Nick Fuentes and what he says, you can't talk about no Black person like a Marcus Garvey. I don't want to hear nothing about a Black person like a Louis Farrakhan. I don't want to hear nothing negative from you about Hebrew Israelites. Mm -hmm. If you, because clearly I believe Nick Fuentes should have a platform everywhere. Clearly, I've made that very clear. I've had conversations with him. I actually view him as a friend. He, everybody knows this. I've been with him at concerts and everything. But also, the other side is true, though, because a lot of people are starting to say Nick Fuentes is cool, but you can't get mad at somebody supporting Marcus Garvey. That right. makes no sense. I have friends that are Hebrew Israelites. Yes, mm -hmm. they do not like white people. That is a mm -hmm. fact. But I have Gripper friends. I'm talking about Gripers. A lot of them do not like black people. <laughs> so, so, mm -hmm. so, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I'm saying? I just want to miss, everybody got to keep the same. All I want people to keep the same energy. The same energy. That's the Bryson mantra. If y'all didn't know, bro, keep the same that's energy. Same energy. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> definitely it. Well, I, and I was talking to Pro, I was like, this is so dumb to me in the grander, in the basics of it's real simple, right? Uh, my ancestors and I come from a place that is clearly darker and colder, which means my skin evolved to need to take in the most vitamin D possible so I could live. I also have the kind of um, uh, system that's set up to need more protein. It's that simple because where my ancestors come from, it's less vegetables, more snow, more meat. Now there's dudes that come from Africa who can live much longer. In some, just like if me and 
both of you guys, if we all went out in the sun for 30 minutes, I'll be burned. Because just because we have different skin tones and because our bodies are different, just like um, a camel is going to behave differently in the desert than a bear. Because a bear was not set up to be in the desert. But if you put a camel in the mountains, he's uptight, right? And it's so silly that we take these basic things about ourselves and we turn them into these major fights when specifically, as we would say, abortion is a thing right now. Mm -hmm. I believe we're going to look at abortion in, in so many years, 20, 30 years, the way we looked at slavery back in the day, which was, as we know, there were presidents that were against slavery, but it was just a thing. It was like, I think it's bad, but it's a thing that exists in America and I don't have the power to change it. And then we go back and go, wow, they should have done everything they could to have changed it uh, up to and including fighting a war. And and I believe that, that it's going to be the same thing eventually for abortion. I, I truly believe that because what nation can go on expecting that to be cool and expecting to be blessed and 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 just function for that matter. Blessed. This nation is being under judgment. Another fun yeah. fact: we were talking about the difference between races. I, I didn't know a lot of people didn't know this, but black people have a have higher testosterone because of how our body get, gets the sun, because of how we're equipped for the sun. It's, it's very it's very weird when you research and be a black people. People with darker skin, uh, they have higher levels of testosterone because of how their body interacts with the sun. They get they get the vitamin D and stuff. Next thing you're going to tell me is that black folks are superior at athletics. <laughs> what? Oh, um, like, what? I mean, a, a quick question. I just thought about this just now when you said that. Do you think black people are like on average faster and stuff like that because of the higher levels of testosterone? Well, I mean, it, that has a part to play in it in that, that you know, possible? as fighters, we know. The first thing a fighter reaches for when he starts losing his edge is testosterone. So I know it does. Uh, yeah. I mean, test is the first thing that you reach for, you know, testosterone replacement therapy is very popular. Joe Rogan made that popular. Uh, TRT is what they, I mean, it's got initials now, but test is the first thing that any man goes for when he starts losing his edge because your body, that's how, you know, you start dying is when you get over that hill in your body, produces less testosterone on a regular basis and through age you can see that in men so yeah and that's why it's a banned substance uh trt's banned in fighting it's the first thing you go for as a oh. man well it, may, it makes sense really when we think about you know the the uh the t's that are trying to get over in the women's sports you know what i'm saying like our biggest arguments first of all dude you're a man at the end of the day, you're a man. You're built different. You have the testosterone that flows through your body way different than these women. So, no, 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 no. So, in the same sense, if, you know, we know that testosterone is the major player there, like, it would make sense that if, you know, black people have a higher testosterone level, those those testosterones pushing through your body, maybe is the little extra juice. Oh, Lord, now we about to get, now we about to get banned from sports. God dang it. <laughs> yeah. no, I, think, I don't know the percentage. I think when I read it, it was like I don't know how I don't know how high this is on the grand scheme of things, but I think on average, like people have like three percent higher testosterone on average. Well, mm. and you know that's all you need. That the difference between good and great, right? In a yeah. boxer, the difference between good and great could be a quarter of a second. You know the the you know a, a running back. You know what I mean? The ability to 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 get up on somebody, tackle them, quarter of a second, half a second. Is the difference yeah. between you know amazing and you know third That's round, fourth round pick? I'm gonna look more into that tonight, actually, because it's just it's just interesting. So it is. now you got me about to jump into something. I just made some notes too. <laughs> I'm definitely <laughs> writing notes right now. <laughs> oh man, okay. I I gotta ask this. I can't I can't let this. I I will not let this slip away. Because I know I got some people thing. that's uh watching. That I, I mentioned about this then, and you 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 honestly found out something before a lot of others found out something. And um, that's dealing with, you know, what I'm saying a lot of our favorite rappers, favorite producer, um, favorite engineer, favorite uh dream chaser, if you would, um, Kanye West, right? A lot of us have been influenced and truly love the mind of what was and is Kanye West. Um you got to work with them overseas, no doubt. I, I forgot I didn't give you your Mr. Internationally Known Recording Artist. I have to make sure that I say that. You know, Bro, that was, my first, that was my first time overseas, and I had to spend, like, man, 
like five, six thousand bucks to even try to get at a pay shady people to try to see if I can get a passport that quick. It was mm. Mm. yeah, but it, it was crazy. And that that was like especially right after COVID, bro, because they they've been tripping on the passport stuff lately, man. Like yeah, I didn't know that. I, I never even attempted to get a passport. I thought you just get it. And yeah. uh so when uh when they contacted me, I said I, I can get a passport. And uh, I started trying to get it. And they're like, you had to get an appointment. And there was no appointment. It's like four months. I'm like, what? But I had, I got like connects from like, even connects from my old world. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That was like, they know people that can make stuff happen. I think I paid like three different people, a couple thousand bucks. And one person ended up coming through. I hit up senators. I I, I tried I tried everything. But uh, I ended up getting the passport, though. Legit. Legit. Um, That's... But we'll we'll talk about that at another time. That that whole process, man, because like people don't understand dealing with them with things like that and actually trying to to see the world. And that's that's kind of one thing that bothers me. Like if I have my proper identification of like I'm I'm in this state, I'm here. If I am a member of this state, I'm a citizen. It's completely known. I vote. I pay the taxes you tell me to pay on my house. Uh, I got my car situated. I got all this stuff. You know who I am. I have no problems. Why can't you just issue me my passport? Passport. It's so crazy. I didn't. I didn't even know it was like that. Like I was so shocked when people yeah. found out I got a passport in six days. People were like, "How did that happen?" I'm like, "God, pay it. God. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay, but God made it possible. He made and sure he that he did. Because <laughs> yeah. I know some like popular rappers that was shocked I got it that quick. Yeah. So it was. It was a very interesting thing, but yeah, I worked with. I went in there. What's funny is I thought it was like kind of fake the whole time because I'm like, mm-hmm. like, cause, cause when they hit me on Instagram, his producer ADA Keys and was like, Kanye wanted me to help with the, the album, so I didn't mm-hmm. know what that meant at first. I know, cause I know Kanye, um, he he lets people write for him a little bit, but I'm like, did he want a feature? Like I didn't know what it was, so <clears throat> they sent me this beat called Hood Rat. Wanted me to send something back. I sent something back like 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. And the producer was like, Bro, what? That was fast. And I was like, Yeah, he's like, Bro, this joint sound crazy. I was like, Yeah, yeah. So they said, Can you get a passport? Now, I was supposed to be there a week earlier, but I couldn't get that passport. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Bro, if you get it, you need to come now because the way Kanye Mai work, we can be in a different, you know, country next week. And I'm like, So I got it and I ended up going. And, uh, I was like, I know who Eddie Keys is. I used to be like a, I used to be a Kanye coat fan. That's how, that's how much mm-hmm. a Kanye kind of fan I used to be. And uh, so when I opened up the elevator to the hotel, I was like, this is really Eddie Keys. I was like, that's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. I didn't act like that because I felt like before I even went, I told my, because my mom and my daddy was like, don't be overly Bryson with the Bible. And I'm like, yeah. no, nah, that's the main thing I'm doing. I, I wouldn't even be able to enjoy myself or like sit in the moment until I did that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I get in there. We open the door to the hotel, to the hotel room. First person I see is Kanye. You know what I'm saying? He thanked me for coming out, blah, blah, blah. Then he ended up telling me he found me because of my song called Homemakers, which was so crazy. All of it was so weird to me. I'm like, this is crazy. Um, and then we were chilling, talked about God a little bit that night, but I I, I ain't get to link up with him about 9 p.m. Then the next day he was called time got her at 10. My Bible out now. We talking scripture, you know what I'm saying? So we now I can do what I what I thought like I came here to do. My hat said repent. My shirt said make America straight again or something. Like I'm like I'm making sure I let it be known what I'm standing on while I'm here. I thought that was mm-hmm. I was in the room. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was there, and um, so we talked about the Bible. He didn't take it bad. He mm-hmm. actually was like rocking with what I was saying. You know what I'm saying? He was rocking with what I'm saying. I'm like. This is, I said, man. Now I can, now I can actually say, okay, I can't even hear Kanye West. At first, mm-hmm. I couldn't say it. I got that out, you know. And uh, so it was crazy. Well, it was there. It was crazy. I felt like he kept trying to like sort of impress me though, because like after he saw I was really reading the Bible, he would say some sporadic things about God here and there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, it's, it's it's okay, bro. I'm not even yeah. that, like, you know what I'm saying? But um. Yeah, it was it was it was a crazy experience, and the 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 craziest part is how he went right back to Satan five months later, um, and it's it's so crazy because the only people that really understand how crazy it is is other people that worked with him during the same time frame. So like Shane, mm-hmm. yeah, me and Shane be bonding over that, bro. It's like we was both like 
we both know how passionate Kanye was about God for real. It mm-hmm. wasn't fake. It wasn't no internet stuff. But I can't say it to people who wasn't, you know what I'm saying, there. Right. But when you see that, so what he ended up become, it is so crazy, especially for me, because you forced on my hand. I had to call you out. I ain't mm-hmm. like for a while. I didn't know why God put me in that position. Right. <clears throat> but when God, I mean, uh, when Kanye started coming out and talking like sort of against God, I was like, oh, God want to see what I'm going to really stand on, because mm-hmm. this is the biggest, biggest, one of the biggest cultural icons in any form. Definitely the most cultural rap, biggest cultural rapper alive. So it's like, what you gonna do, Bryson? You gonna call him out now? What you gonna do? You gonna let him slide? And it's funny because he was start, he started posting his wife naked like a week after the calendar, conservative calendar stuff. So it's like I had to say, <laughs> yeah, you had to. <laughs> you know it wouldn't be right. It wouldn't be right. So when I when I saw it, I'm like, wow, you really about to make me do it. And then what made me snap is he responded to a Christian that was like caring for him. Like, yo, what happened? You supposed to be on your walk. He like cussed the dude out. That's when I like, I'm coming public, bro. I'm snapping. I don't even care. You can you can sue me for breaking the NDA. Because the craziest thing was like he cussing out people, and that irritated me a little bit because he told me in person he didn't like the way his wife dressed. He literally yeah. said it. He said that. He didn't like the way his wife dressed, but he didn't want to ruin this marriage like he ruined like he ruined the last one, trying to be overly, you know what I'm saying, whatever he felt. And then mm-hmm. um, you know, he was venting about a lot of stuff. Kanye likes to talk, he likes to yeah. vent, he likes to go on. I bet you if y'all talk to Shane, he said the same thing. Kanye, he likes he to did. go on like, tangents. He did. Oh, okay. So I, he likes to walk Yeah, on. he we had him on a couple of weeks ago. It was cool. He, he mentioned you as well. Um mm-hmm. and we all agreed that. Uh, and this is kind of cool to be talking to you. We all agreed we're all trying to be more like you. So. <laughs> <laughs> as far as just like, man, just being true to your walk, whoever you are as a person, yeah. being that true to your walk is amazing. Something I wanted to ask you and something interesting, because I just saw uh, uh, Jim Brewer, who I've got to work with before, you know, in the, you know, I'm in that comedy world. Yeah. Um, and he was on Roseanne Barr's show and, you know, she's a Christian now and stuff. Uh, and, and, Jim Brewer talked about Dave Chappelle getting visited and he said that, you know, when they were doing the movie and everything was cool and then like, you know, they went on about their business and about six, eight months later, they were together at the Aspen comedy fest and he was visited and it, it was one of those, he wouldn't exactly, he told Jim Brewer, but Jim Brewer wouldn't say who, but it was basically one of those, here's some coffee from your house. You know, we're in Aspen, you know, you live in Chicago. Here's some coffee from your house. Did you want to talk? about what you're saying and here's what you need to say. And then Shane had mentioned when he was in uh, UAE, I believe Dubai, he got visited by somebody, Kanye did. And like some super powerful world leader type of dude visited him. And that was right before he got back and released his record. The thing that bothered Shane the most was his kids. He was like, you know, if Kanye wants to go in a different direction as an artist, whatever. But the fact that he had his kids up there with dudes blowing blunt smoke on the same stage, and he's putting his 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 children out there. He, he was like, they had a whole conversation about Kanye going. My biggest problem is keeping my kids safe, and you know what I mean, and and not around this stuff. And then Kanye was just doing that. Do you think he might have got got to? Knowing you know things the way you do, do you think he might have got got to? And that's why this change has happened. I'm gonna say what I think it is. Shout out to Shane because Kanye definitely likes talking about how he's trying to keep his kids from the. Ice spice and blah blah blah. He went on that rant with me too. I'm gonna tell you what I think it is, bro. I think he's obsessed with his wife. And I think that in his mind, he had to make a decision because he clearly was bothered by the way his wife dressed. He said it to me, and he had only known me one full day at that mm-hmm. point in time. He just liked that I was like reading the Bible and stuff. So I guess that's why he was venting to me a lot. He was like venting to me about his whole life after 24 hours of knowing me. And he didn't like the way his wife dressed, but he also expressed he didn't want to ruin his marriage. And I think he had to make a decision. And I think he completely embraced and chose his current wife. And I've heard from people around him that people have tried to, warm about her and he has completely like cursed them out 
And um, and I think that's what it is because with, with Kanye in the beginning, I was trying to make up excuses for him. This is a grown man in his late forties, I think, or mid forties. You know what I'm saying? And I think I don't think he got visited. I think he made a choice. That's what I think. Sounds about right. Um, Mike has an interesting um, theory that I'm, I'm as honestly, I'm waiting to see play out. And if it is, uh, if it is that or this, or if it's that, or if it's, you know, he just completely gave in and it's a, um, it's a three part. Um, and Mike can explain it better. You know what I'm saying? But it's a three part situation. And this was just, this was part one before the introduction of the, the next part before the culmination and seeing, you know, the whole thing play straight out, you know, in a better light. And uh, it could be that, you know, it could, it, it could be the, all right, I'm here with it here. And then I'm going to the next level. And this is me kind of shedding that this is my journey through shedding it. And this is, you know, me out of the cocoon and shedding it and becoming this full everything that I'm supposed to be. Um, so when he laid that out, I'm like, OK, it could be work. It could work. But I think he may have, you know, possibly got visited because, you know, when he released the text messages from Harley Pasternick, like, you know, yeah, bro, like we'll, we'll put you in that place again. You know, we'll get you on those meds X, Y, Z. Um, you can tell me better, like or tell us better about how his, his eating is and does he make sure particular people, you know, make his food, prepare his food, or is he just out there with the diet? Cause like these people, man, with him being as big as he are or big as he is rather, they can flip something in your food to, to grab your mind and then use their MK ultra abilities to get you back in line to where they need you to be and get you to, to falling back into the manuscript that is Hollywood because that's what they need right now. They can't have us breaking the system. They so, can't have us uh, getting out and letting the people know what's happening. I can't speak on anything I didn't see personally, mm -hmm. but he definitely didn't have no chef or nothing. We, we were all eating uh, food at the hotel, but it was like one of the most popular, like it was a very expensive, very rich hotel. Gotcha. And, um, and we were just like eating, like we would order just random stuff up to the room, like American food, like burgers and fries and stuff like that. And uh, and when he made, when he basically made us go to a play, um, he ate just the food at the the the, the Japanese place. Uh, but what the, play? one thing that just shocked me when I walked in, I was like, he didn't gain a lot of weight. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he looked but, uh, rough on the that vultures video he released. He looked rough, and then the. There was an interview a couple of weeks ago. I was like, this, he looks rough. You know, like, not just old, yeah. but rough right now. He looks like he's going hard. Yeah. So. I mean, he, he had, he had energy when I was with him. I mean, we literally walked like we did a 30 minute walk together. Uh, so clearly he has some type of energy. You know what I'm saying? But um, I don't know, man. Like if somebody got to him, I would love for that to be an excuse. But I just think he made a decision because the stuff he's saying in these interviews don't sound forced from the time I spent with him. Now I was only with him like a week. I was only with him like face to face, like four days out of that week. And, um, but we spent a lot of time together over those four days. And I mean, this sounds, I mean, it's, 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 it sounds like him, but you know, one rant he went on while we was there and I didn't like the rant. Because I was like, this is what people say when they try to justify stuff. Mm -hmm. He was talking, and this is why I said I think he was trying to impress me. I didn't say anything. He just came in there, he just started going on a rant. And he said, um, everything is for God. Like everything we doing is for God. But he like he said, even if some people are in here, because by the way, it was like 16 of us working on projects. It was kind of fun, but it was very interesting. And he was like, even if somebody in here not a Christian. They are also working for God because this whole project I'm making for God. So they working for God too. And it's one of those things where it's like, he knows he's around degenerate people, but he's justifying being around degenerate people by saying we're all working for God. It's, it's the, I used to do the same thing when I used to, trust me, I, I understand what that, what that is early in your walk. Um, but a lot of the conversations that were happening, like we had, there was an argument from the team. Kanye wasn't in the room when this argument happened. It was like everybody else on the direction of the album. 
a lot of people were like, we need to just cater to the young kids. And then I'm like, I think people will enjoy the 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 more Kanye style stuff. Kanye is not known for making just short, catchy jingles. Kanye is known for making quality music and it's still being catchy. You know what I'm saying? Um, I like, and a lot of people are liking Kanye doing the Christian stuff. So I think he needs to just, you know what I'm saying? And half of people are like, oh heck no, no, no. He, he, Kanye said he want to get the kids. We got to get the kids. Now look at how the music sounds. It sounds like he's trying to get kids. You know, he's trying to get the younger crowd with, with the mm-hmm. super disgusting music. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, what I think, like I said, I think he made a decision. And I think part of that decision came because people around him wanted him to go that way. Y'all heard him in an interview. He said he wanted to not curse. And Todd Sign said, no, we're going to curse on this record. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Kanye said that in the interview. Yeah. And one thing about Kanye, he can be influenced by people. That's a good thing and a bad thing. And I think this, this, this just—I mean, it, it went, it went real bad. Um, you know, uh, some billionaire dude came in there, forgot who he was, and uh, you know, Kanye was bragging to them like they're just Bryson Gray guy up there reading the Bible, studying Matthew. So they came up there, and I guess she's a super Christian, and she was excited, like man. So Kanye was going on some ramp. Cause they had like some like friend with them. I'm not gonna lie, she was kind of annoying. She was trying to play like therapist with Kanye, and you can tell it was annoying Kanye. But it was annoying <laughs> everybody. We're like, his he just and my mom like he just met you. Why are you trying to play like it was the most corniest thing? Like, I'm like Kanye better than me. I would have said, bro, stop talking to me. Because it was yeah. so weird. The timing wasn't right, it wasn't the vibe, it was very weird. But while they were doing that, the the, the billionaire's wife whispered to me and was like. Kanye needs people like you around him. These other people. He told us she was studying Matthew. How long you been studying about? Like we had a conversation, but like she pretty much knew like people, Kanye was not around good people. Mm-hmm. And um, I mean, I, I just think we're seeing the fruits of, of, of his actions. I hope that. We'll we'll see, man. You know, we'll see. I, I would I wish the best for everybody, especially, you know, someone who has influenced so many and and took the turn to go on the right path and was setting people on the right. Like, I still, to this day, listen to uh, Jesus is King and Sunday Service. People don't even know about the Sunday Service album. that yep. you, you got it if you got it, right? And this was them, like, singing this was him with the choir and the choir you know the, it was very light productions with him it was more just the the choir was the instrumentation of of the, of the album and it just reminded me of you know growing up as a southern baptist you know like that's that's what i miss that's why i miss going to church right because i grew up in a a nice 200 max congregation church you know right there on the tip of the hood where there's a a row of man that we we call it church row really you know what i'm saying because really on every block there is a black church and every church has a strong congregation right so the choirs was always great at every church you knew it was on you you knew it was going down it was small, it was family, and the production wasn't everything. Now we have these mega churches, you know, with the ATMs and the vestibules. So you can make sure you got that money. So when that offering plate comes around 20 times, you can drop something in it. And you have, um, you know, sound systems in the church that's better than the nightclub that I just was working at last night. You know, like that bothered me so much and noticing above all a lot of these churches stop reaching out to their communities that the churches actually were in as far as helping build up the people um teaching them financial literacy like there's just certain things that a church should be doing for its parishioners right and um they stopped doing it and it was more for the show more for the glamour just got disenfranchised man and i just was like look i just want to move and as best as a positive light as i can to influence people and you know i'm i still fall short of the glory because i am not perfect i am still a man on my path right i still enjoy my drinks 
it's just something that I'm on right now that I will get rid of eventually. I'm sure it's not like I got to pop open a bottle every single day. You know, it's like more of a social drinker. I'm out. I'm handling business. I'm only going to get one drink. There's one drink that I'm getting. It's just a cranberry and vodka. You know what I mean? And I'm not, oh, I need to cost amigos and pop open 1800 and tequila shots for everybody. No, that's not me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not me. Well, getting, drunk, me. getting drunk is the same. Drinking isn't the same. I know a lot of I know a lot of Baptists. They're like taking one of the alcohols and saying literally Jesus' first miracle was alcohol. <laughs> Turning water into wine. Absolutely. Water he into made wine. It. He made it because the guests at the wedding ran out of wine. That's what mm -hmm. you know, that's what makes it more funny. It's like mm -hmm. so like in in moving that way, like being that guy with that understanding, you know, um that's really just the, the walk that I expect to see from others. So because I don't, I just move in, you know, move in the light that I know that he wants me to be out here. My mission right now is to again get all our people educated, um, getting better music, you know, like um, I wish, I wish, and it's crazy because I just had this conversation with my brother Smooth today when we were talking about um, quote unquote clean music or positive music and positive influences and being different from, you know, all the mainstream stuff and the mainstream won't pick it up. And it's like, I don't care about mainstream. Let them, that's theirs. We can literally build our own Get the kids that we want to see. Teach them how to write music. All this shooting and all this stuff, they talk about this in the music, but it's nothing that they lived. Let's teach them how to write about what they are living, what they want to live, and then introduce them to those ideas. And we can easily erase all of that stuff, but it's up to us to start and do it and show people, hey, this is cool. You know, and his thing is like... um. You know, but the first generation, you know, they're not going to pop like the third and fourth. Well, no, no crap, Sherlock. You know, I'm, I'm a, y'all know the word that goes there, you know, yeah. you know, it, it, it's fine, but at least they started that movement. So it would have been great if Kanye would have been like, yeah, I'm truly going for the kids. I don't want my daughter and my children around this. I want to see them around this. And then created that spear, you know, of what they want to see the kids be. Um, case in point. Lajay Johnson, number four, plays for LSU, right? She's from Savannah. I call her Super Kid. I dubbed her Super Kid years ago because she was rapping all clean music, right? She's like all clean. She was a kid. Her mom was like, yeah, you're going to be a kid, point blank, period. Um, she was a Girl Scout. She was playing basketball. She was a cheerleader, right? She was getting her grades in school. Legit Super Kid, you know? It's those types of things that I feel we need to get behind to push to be able to change the narrative we want to see on the streets. Will it be on TV and the radio? Maybe if we go by the ads, but we don't have I to. Will. I think, you know, I think um, I talked to my homie Tyson. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand like <clears throat> how close at least Christian rap is to breaking through the, through the mainstream. The reason Christian rap never broke through. And I, I didn't even know Chris Rap existed until four years ago. But, mm -hmm. like, when I heard what people were putting out, it's all mediocre music. Like, it's, like, mm -hmm. lackluster. There's nothing interesting about it. And that was the problem. But now with social media, with people turning turn to Christ, you got people being making actually dope music. And a lot of the people making the best music are the people that are more biblical and more like, probably because the biblical got that shock factor to it, which makes it that much. And like people listen to Kanye West music, it always has a shock factor somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what a lot of like uh, artists, uh, biblical doing now. And the reason why I know we're close is because a lot of radio stations are hitting me up about a lot of my music now. A lot of the old radio stations that I thought would never play my music. They're like, yo, this joint fire. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a Christian song, but if you just, you know, not say the words for a little bit, you don't know what type of song it is. You just think it's mm -hmm. a song that's what that's supposed to be on the radio. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I think because of social media, which is bittersweet, and I, you just need the right people at the right moment. I, I think it's like right there on the brink. I think it just needs something to break through, but I think it's right there. It's right there on the brink. Yeah, I think I think people get so fun fact when people look at the Billboard charts. Rap is decreasing in its market share. Mm -hmm. Rap is like easily the 
most popular genre in this country. Now, this year is now tied with pop music. So it's not number one on its own no more like rap has been for the last seven to ten years. It's actually decreasing. Pop has remained the same, but you got country music increasing and stuff like that. If you look deeper at why, you look at the charts on the Hot 100, less songs are using very using profane language. People mm-hmm. are kind of tired. People are kind of tired of the super profane music. I think a lot of people are tired of the super degenerate music. I think people are it's too. I think it's people are just tired of it. Like how many yeah. times can you talk about killing somebody? Nice. <laughs> like, like, and and cry about you know gun crime. You know like and yeah. that that'd be my fight in 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 the fight is like, dude, you're literally pushing for every shoot a ninja artist and 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 all of this crap. But then on the same breath, you're crying, we got too much gun crime and we need to take the gun. Well, maybe. Exactly. Like e- even with artists like J. Cole, right? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard none of stuff because I don't listen to secular music. But like even when people you listen to J. Cole, you listen to him. Sometimes he'll rap about some regular people's stuff, but he's still rapping about like F and B's and yeah. it's, it's 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 still like the sound is different, but it's the same stuff as the regular rapper rap about. Yeah, and I think people are just kind of like they want something different. Mm-hmm. Like a lot, like when I have a song to go viral, I'm like everybody get exposed song. It's people are so, I think people are just so fed up. They're just happy to see somebody call it out people. Like this, this is what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think that's what people miss it. That's why I say, I think we write, I think we write on the brink. I don't know if it's going to really break through. Like I think it's going to break through, but I think, I think it's right on that brink. People are hungry, man, because, first of all, the quality of, of hip-hop music has gone in the trash. trash. Hip-hop music nowadays just isn't – it. they don't even rhyme. It's just a dude screaming about yeah. how he's going to kill another dude, and he does drugs, I'll and he abuses see. women. And he's not even – yeah, he's not even – Money crazy that he doesn't like, have. Like, I got it. I, I know people that I can call and they'll just scream about how hard they are on the phone with no skill. You know, like I don't need Bro. like this is a rapper. Not like I thought it was a joke. I was listening to the radio. I thought it was a joke. Like one of those like commercials where they're making a joke because it was that silly. The dude was like, I come out of prison and I murder you. It's like, really? But you're Bro. not even rapping. You're just talking Bro. about like, like what? So, so last month, um, the rail station said my song All Yours from my album is gonna be played on the radio, right? Right. They said listen to it for, for the hour. You know how radio is. It's just mm-hmm. they don't know exactly when in that hour is gonna play what it's supposed to play in that hour. I spent an hour listening to like what's being played on the radio, and like I'm like, yo, what? This is terrible. You know, you know what it really was? This this is how you know music nowadays suck. Every song I heard was a trash remake. Of a song mm-hmm. that was popular when I was younger. Every I'm last not even one of them. It was, it was the weirdest one of them. thing. Yep. Like, bro, like yep. literally 95% of them. I'm like, bro, all this is like remakes of stuff I was playing. Like people was playing when we was younger. It was so weird to me, bro. I'm like, it's, and it's not, it's not good. What I realized is people, I'm gonna tell you why they ruined uh mainstream rap, Lil Wayne. And I'm gonna tell you why. Lil Wayne started the I don't write. I don't know what that was, but Lil Wayne started the I don't write stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that became so popular, people think it's cool to not write your music. Yeah. And what happened is when you in there trying to freestyle, everybody not Lil Wayne. It's like everybody trying to be Steph Curry, but everybody isn't Steph Curry. Stop trying to yank up threes from half court. And mm-hmm. I feel like with rap, people don't write no more. Most rappers I talk to, no, nah, I don't write. I just go in the studio and just, you know what I'm saying, rapping. I'm like, oh, that's why that's that's why I sound like that. That's why I sound like that. Yeah. So it's not like that. And I, I think that's what ruined mainstream rap. Nobody actually puts pen to pad or 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 finger to keyboard. People just go in there and freestyle, come out with a bunch of not like rap music. Like is is trash. People think I'd be joking when I say this, but Christian rap, like literally, I think is better than mainstream rap. The only thing mainstream rap got is the the mixing. Like a lot, sometimes the mixing, but a lot of the mixes be trash now too. If I'm being honest, the bass be too loud. I'm like, bro, y'all suck. But uh, it was the beats at first, but I think Christian rap caught up with caught up with the production of, of the newer times. Um, but uh, lyrically, bro, rap sucks. It sucks bad. I haven't listened to secular rap since, and I thank God because that sucks. <laughs> yeah, it man, whew, it's it's a fight. That's why you know I stepped away from um. I stepped away from DJing in the clubs and in those like spaces. 
if I'm not at a, a sporting event that's for families or a family festival or, you know, Hotel Con, uh, not Hotel Con, but uh, the Grifties where I was called in for or something like that, bro, I'm not going. Like, don't don't expect me. I ain't got no sexy red on my computer. I, 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 I didn't know who Adilo, uh, whatever his name was, Ooh. up until he came. It's a dude like, D-Lo D- something. D- Is that some a dude, dude. That- some gay stuff happened, right? Yes, yes, yes. That guy where uh Rick Ross baby mama had the pictures yes, or whatever. Yes, yes. yes. that's, like, yes, that's the only that way is, I know him. That's crazy. Bro, it's crazy. I learned about him that week. Like that day, that situation went ha- went it happened. He was in Savannah the next day performing and packed the club out. And I'm sitting here like, he just the same dude that that was just with the and yeah, oh, oh, okay. Interesting that he's in Savannah the very next day packing the club out. But it's like Boss Man Dilo, that's his name. That, that it, it finally hit me. Like, yeah, but I don't have there, I don't, and he again, he packed the club out. So clearly, I don't have none of his songs on my computer, which means I don't know any of his music, which means I couldn't blend and mix this in because I really don't know what you guys are listening to right now. So I'm going to be labeled as a sorry DJ because I don't listen to and play this, yeah. you know, particular music. Yeah, I'm going to stay away because I can't do it. I'm just going to stay away. I'm going to do this other stuff. I use the DJ too, bro, but I, um, I wanted to. I, it was it was during that phase I got obsessed with EDM. I wanted I wanted to do the yeah. top forty clubs, man. Yeah, top forty clubs. They, they they already like were booked with DJs. I'm like, bro, I'm popping though. Let me just do one. I, I never got into it. I got I got tired of like doing the rap clubs very quickly. Yeah, man, it's it's very tiring. It definitely sucks. That EDM though, that pop, that top forty club. Yeah, those are those are the that's the fun, bro. I wanted to, and I didn't get getting get a chance to. Um. But I wanted to go to Vegas, like I wanted a Vegas residency because residency. that was during that time. Yeah, bro. Yeah. yeah, that was that time. You know, where like the re- they started getting away from the casinos and the residencies and the nightclubs in Vegas is what was popping. I was like, "Yo, I have got to go be that DJ." Like I am bro. definitely trying to like go be a dead mouse, god dang on Daft Punk situation. Bro, like, I was I- on the brink. I was on the brink when I when I had my little idiom run. I had that two song yeah. run that both went crazy. I was on the brink of so much stuff, bro. Then my man, me, my manager split up, and I. Just... Yeah, for righteous, you know, I'm the same way, bro. Like right now, there's events and people want me to DJ, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, tell me more about it. And they'll mention a rainbow, and I'm like, nope, pro out. It's Shark Tank. I'm out. Boop. Yeah. I'm out. What? I'm out. Why? Why do you feel that way? Because I don't get down with that. I don't. I don't even eat Skittles no more. I used to love Skittles. Okay, <laughs> I do not eat Skittles no more because you guys, honestly, like you ruined it for me. You ruined it for me. Bro, honestly, good. I stopped making EDM music because it was like if that's the big money you can get at EDM, then I don't even like. I mean, I'm also like you know what I'm saying. So it's sort of, I don't know, sort of discouraged me to to. It sort of discouraged me from making EDM. But I can't wait to drop this EDM song because I made I made the beat and. It's rare for me to make my own beats now. I probably make like one beat on, on my albums now, bro. Yeah, I can't wait to, man. And this is your music is like, I don't know, like I said, it's always been good. Like it was good. 336 Boys was good. Be serious. It was good. King Vodka, you know what I mean? Like it <laughs> was, it you, it was, quality. you know, MAGA ripe. It's always rap, it's always been quality. Thank so you, like to 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 see it now, like knowing what this is going to be on the way, it's like, oh yeah, this is this is going to be, bro. this is awesome. This is like Frieza. Yeah, didn't see my final form, you know. Bro, who, I, I, who produces I most it. of your tracks now? You said what? Who does your beats and stuff now, mainly? Oh, uh, it depends. It, it it depends on what I'm trying to do, especially because I do so many different things, bro. I have to contact so many different people. Sometimes somebody will send me a beat, like the chest, the chest of the devil song. Uh, the the second half of the beat was produced by a guy named Dexter. But um, I wanted to recreate my first half. So the first half of Chess of the, De- Chess of the Devil, I produced it. Um, so I wanted it to be something like unique. I'm good at unique, like advanced beats. But a lot of these I like to rap on are more simple to let the lyrics breathe more. And I don't know why my brain is not as good as making the simple beats nowadays. Like I don't like, like I just made one a song the other day. And I was like, it's fire. This is the first simple fire beat I've made since Burn Balenciaga. Because I thought that Burn Balenciaga beat was so fire that I made. But uh, I can't. Uh, I don't know the simple beats I like to rap on. It's hard for my brain to make them. Like if I make a beat, it's gonna sound like something like legendary, like something like with some weird sounds in it. You know what I'm saying? Cause I've been producing since I was like nine. 
it just I, I get tired of like the simple stuff. But um, so it just depends. Uh, Don produced a lot of my beats. Don Troches, uh, got in T Dog. It it like it, it just depends, bro. It depends on who got what I needed that in that exact moment. That's it. Which is tend to like it's kind of how it is right now anyway. Which is really which is a great thing. I push artists to like go work with other producers. Like if you yeah. don't make, you know, if you don't make your own beats, that's fine. There's plenty of producers out there and you could love their stuff. You can talk to them and y'all could end up on a, on a bond where it's like, oh, Hey, my, yep. you feed me. Look, here's the Dropbox, bro. When you got something you think that I need to have, drop it in the Dropbox. You know what I'm saying? Shoot me a text, say, Hey, is, there's a care package in there for you and we'll keep it moving. And then if I pick it up and like, Hey, I want to move this. Hey bro. I'm writing something. I'll send it to you in a second. You know, like bro, what I do with a lot of my producers that a lot of other people don't do is I give them a percentage of my songs mm-hmm. because I'll tell somebody, I'll be like, listen, you think you want this upfront money, but you got to think about it. If I take this song and it makes a million dollars, you get zero. I paid you yeah, zero. Price. Yeah. So, like, I can pay you upfront if you want it, but bro, why not just take a percentage? Because if it goes crazy, you don't get a monthly fee for at least the next two years. And you're going to definitely mm-hmm. make way more than whatever I would have paid you up front. You would have got $200 from me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Instead of this 1500 over just a longer time. You know what I'm saying? Right. So uh, that's what I do with a lot of our producers. And a lot of, a lot of them, a lot of them, a lot of them rock with it. Because you just never know what song is going to go. Yeah. Like and that's not. how it should be. That's that's how it, that that's the movement, man. That's that's the education and the move that we're moving to create in this new renaissance of performers and entertainments in art, right? We're not going with the old 360 deal BS. We're not no. going with the pay me up front. No, this is about longevity. This is about yeah. I am creating legendary music. This is a part of your legacy because I'm creating my legacy and being that you are attached to me and legacy creating, this is just, this, this is this train. You want to be a part of it? This is how we're moving. Bro, bro, that, that, bro, what I'm, I'm in the process of trying to set up now. So I'm like, man, if people, the problem is the, the game is so jacked up. People think that upfront money is, is the best, the best option. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yes. If, if you're dealing with somebody who like, has really no potential. If you're dealing with somebody that you've seen got numbers, mm-hmm. like, yeah, you think the smart thing is that upfront money? Are you crazy? If you know that I have the potential to possibly get a million views on something, you don't take the upfront. That's why I always, bro. What I wish I could find is like, like, boom, I have an engineer that mixes my stuff. It has to be high quality. But listen, every song you mix, bro, you get a percentage of it, bro. Like, because you're part of Bryson Gray. Bryson Gray is my name. Bryson Gray is also this team of people. Like, I was, I was telling somebody the other day, I was like, bro, if you could edit YouTube videos for me, not music videos, I'm talking about, like, other content. I'm trying to do more content on YouTube. I give you a percentage of my YouTube. You, you I give you 25% of my YouTube. That's that's every month on the 20th for a fact. Mm-hmm. And I already made about 1,500 two bands from it. So, you know, for a fact, you're getting some, especially if we put out more content. Or you make my beat, or you get a percentage of it. You know what I'm saying? If I, if I felt like I edit all my own music videos, but if I found somebody that was like better than better than me at making music videos, like bro, man, you get a percentage too. You know what I'm saying? You, you you get a percentage too because I view it as like I'm trying to create someone that's like we are Bryson Gray because what I noticed is I, I can do everything on my own. It's cool, but everybody I know with a team has because when you're yeah. doing everything on your own, it's easier to make mistakes mm-hmm. because my brain like i'm talking to y'all on this computer this is my music studio computer to my right i'm really back and forth all day between these two computers and then i always like every week i, I realize oh i made a mistake you know what i'm saying if you have a team things are more efficient things run more smooth but see people are so obsessed with money right now they don't know mm-hmm. how to like they don't know how to like i'm like all right all right, you know what I'm saying? I've been telling people, like, I already made this much money a month for music. Mm-hmm. And I felt I had a team, I could grow. And right. for you, you change for growing, you're just going to get the, be, you a part of that monthly money I'm getting. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. I'm My sister, mm-hmm. school now. My sister, I said, if you move to Tennessee, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to pay you monthly, direct deposit too, in your bank account. You know what I'm saying? And 
She's been in Tennessee ever since. She shoots all my music videos, shot the whole movie. You know what I'm saying? And my sister, you know what I'm saying? She's a stay at home wife right now, but she still mm-hmm. get, you know what I'm saying? She still get like $1,800 a month just from shooting my content. And mainly now it's just reels. So we'll go out on a Sunday, give us like two hours, and we shoot like 10 reels. She don't edit them. I edit them. So that's all she got to do. She she two hours out her day for one once a week, and she gone. She still get a direct deposit every month. You know what I'm saying? Sweet but life. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. People don't like the people don't like the work though, man. People, people nah, they don't. Well, but that's a blessing. But also remember, man, like Bryson Gray is a shield. You know what I mean? When when you work for someone like yourself, there are certain other names out there. It's similar, but it's one of those where. And there's there's a lot of pride in that. And then, as you're saying with the team, when you move as a team, it's exponential, right? Because when you run a business, it's always cost over labor, meaning I can pay this person to do half the work. You know what I mean? Or I can do it myself and have all the money. But there's only so much time in the day. If I'm a mover and it's going to take me 12 hours to move this person and they have a six hour span, I have to hire another person we can get this job done in six hours versus 12, but there's a little more cost there as far yep. as residuals go as well. So, so you bring more people in, you bring a team in, there's just a lot more you're going to be able to get done period. That's just how yep. that works. Right. Um, mm-hmm. In the same way that if I can mic up a whole band versus one good musician, who's got to lay a guitar track, then a drum track, then a bass track, it goes a lot quicker if there's just people all in the same groove there. Uh, and then as far as residuals go, man, that's, We have a saying in the industry, the riches are in the residuals, you know, and and that's something that the record company knew a lot. That's that's why there's an old song that goes, uh, um, an old digital underground song that says, I'm just trying to make a dollar out of 15 cent. And the joke is, if you were the music industry back in the 90s, you were like, you got 15 cent on the dollar? How did you do that? Like, who was your agent? Who negotiated such a good deal for you? Because they start out at like seven cents on the dollar. You usually get nine on your first deal. So, Bro, a lot of artists... They'll teach other artists the money is in shows, performance. That's where the money at. No, that's what labels upfront money. Yeah, yeah, that's what labels talk to Goofy Tail, so they can take the money from them from them songs who make it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like bro, I'm telling you, from a person that has had a few. Listen, my song Trump is your president. Probably got 20 million streams overall. Let's go, Brandon. Got 20 million streams overall. I can tell you right now, like. I could never do a show and be perfect. Like, I'm not rich, but I don't have like, I'm not like super duper duper popping. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I make a living off music and I only do shows if I feel like it. I decline more performances than I accept them. It's like, if it sounds fun to me, I'll do it. It has nothing to do with you paying me. It got to sound fun for me to pop out. And, um, and I want you to think about that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's where the money is because it's a continual, it's continual. If you have a song to go successful, you're going to make money off that song for the next four years, period. Easy. Even when it slows down being popular, it's still going to make money. Trump as a president came out in 2020. And it's not my top song no more. Thank God, because now my Christian music is more popular. But, <laughs> but, but it's like my third popular song right now. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's go. Brandon still gets hundreds of thousands of streams where you combine all the platforms per month. I still get money from that. You know what I'm saying? So it's like people got to get out the mindset they want you to be in. A lot of, a lot of these labels and, you know, music directors, they want you in the, in the, in, in a certain mindset so they can enrich themselves. You know what I'm saying? When in reality, you know what I'm saying? Like rest, there's a, or the artist rush. I know what that is. Yeah. The rapper rush. Yeah. 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 It's about this all the time. He talks about this all the time. I'm like, what? Y'all think money's in the shows? Are y'all crazy? No, sir. There is a lot of money in the shows, though, man. There is there a is lot of money in shows. Yeah. Let me be like this. There's a rapper named Connor Price, independent. He makes $150,000 per month between Spotify and Apple Music. He only has 8 million listeners. He's not Drake level. He's not. He's not none of these. He's not none of these people level, but he's popping to the point where he makes 150. I like doing. I want to do a tour. Like if I pop out to be for a tour, I'm not saying don't do shows. I'm saying that's not where real money is. The money, the yeah, real, absolutely. The, the real, the that's why labels give you the show money. Labels like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. you, you can you have the that. show money. Yeah, yeah, you can take that. Yeah. Well, and also yeah. they got you out there selling the product. Yeah, that think part about it like that. Yeah. If I yeah. get you out there on a tour, you're out there going to towns 
selling the product to the, the radio product. and the fans and, and the stores. Because back in the day, mm -hmm. you know, the retail product was a big deal. So, yeah. uh, which is interesting because like everything you're saying didn't exist 20 years ago. You know, there was no, you couldn't make 150 grand off streaming because there was no, you know, what I no mean? <laughs> well, like, yeah, Ice Cube released an album independently and mm -hmm. made millions. So he asked me. Mm -hmm. If you if you could, it's just easier for an independent artist to get a name nowadays. You can't just like back yeah. back yeah. in the day, an independent artist couldn't just get a name. Ice Cube was signed, then went independent and had success because yeah. he already had a name. So yeah. there, there wasn't as much opportunity then. But like even then, Ice Cube figured out what to do one time. He did it; it was successful. He had a platinum independent album, which is do you know how much money that is? You sold a million copies. The CD sold for probably ten dollars a pop. That's ten million. That's ten million. That's ten million dollars just from the album. You probably take away seventy percent of that, depending on how independent you are. Come on, bro. That's nuts. That's boy. Check. I'll this take one. it all okay. day long. So last night I went and saw Jordan Peterson. Right. Um, at least eight thousand people there. The oh cheapest goodness. tickets you could have bought were eighty dollars. Oh my goodness. So ten thousand people times eighty bucks, roughly. Or, um, yeah, just say that. So you're looking at 800 grand for that one. I did the math a little tighter last night, and it looked like conservatively he did 680. So even if it cost him 100 grand in production, which production was light, I mean, it's a dude. He had one other guy from a podcast there uh, that's like an agnostic dude that was supposed to challenge him. And that was it. Two chairs, two video screens, very minimal lighting, you know, one mic. It was, it was. Less production than we did for the Grifties, right? In a stadium. So yeah, mm -hmm. even if it cost him a hundred grand for the production, he still made half a million one night. Boom and out. You, you think he's doing it independently? You think somebody is like setting it up for him? I'm sure he's using Ticketmaster or, you know, one of those people. Cause, you know, I mean, he's on that. I mean, I didn't realize he was, it was like a, so he played where the Oklahoma City Thunder basketball is. And he said he played the same venue. I, I got pictures. You know, you can see right there across the stage. It says home of OKC Thunder Basketball. So he played that play. And it was like going to a game. I mean, traffic. You know what I mean? Traffic to the level of I couldn't get any parking. I had to go across the street to a garage. You know, wow. it was nuts for him. I was like, I did not realize he had it like this. So me, I was, me, I didn't know, I, yeah, I didn't realize Jordan Peterson was that, that popular. Uh, it well, was Oklahoma, nuts. right? So Oklahoma yeah. is... is and how far from like other states in the area is is well, is the city? You're so about two I, and a half hours from Dallas, uh, ninety okay. minutes from Tulsa, two hours, okay. about three hours to uh, Wichita, Kansas City. You know that kind okay. of okay. So those people would drive for for a Saturday night show. Jordan Peterson in that's red country right there. Everything you just mentioned essentially is red country, right? So. They'll make that two hour drive for Jordan Peterson for an eighty dollar ticket, a eighty a eighty dollar hotel room for the night. You know, like th that's doable. So I can see that. And damn, yeah, that's you know, crazy. <laughs> that, that's why I can't wait to set up a tour. I just, I just people don't understand that money, man. I, 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 I you know what? I'm going to send you a prospectus, Bryson. I'm going to send you a prospectus. I, I sent a friend of ours. And I'm, you you already probably know who. Anyway, I'm going to send you a similar prospectus of a road thing where I sent him where yeah. roughly at 200 people, you could make uh, roughly at 200 people a show average. Uh, and you're doing six shows a month, period. So basically Friday, Saturday, and then, you know, maybe a Thursday here and there. You're making roughly, you're clearing after expenses like 30 grand. Yeah, no, listen. As I've the been I've been on multiple tours and tours yeah. are great for me. It's I'm just waiting to set it up how I want to do it because with shows, I don't want to just go out there and perform. I want it to be how, how where I'm at now. I want it to be an event. You know what I'm saying? And I want the yeah. right people to be there with me. And I want to make sure I got the right states. It's a science. I view everything as a science, even mm -hmm. algorithms. It's all a science. Everything's a science and I have to figure out the science. So with a tour, it's, it's 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 the same way. Like I'm thinking, like okay, it should be me, this person, this person, this person. You know what I'm saying? And um, I tested out. I had a few shows in Chicago, both both packed out. You know what I'm saying? They both did well. Where I messed up at is I didn't bring any merch. No, you know at all. Everybody mm -hmm. else brought merch but me, and I see that was my mistake right there. But um, like I see, there is money in touring. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's also time, 
a lot of travel. Oh, a lot harder money than streaming. It's a lot harder dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of hard money because <laughs> when you, with the money off streaming, I've already done the work. You know what I'm saying? Right, it's just right. like I, you know, I released it. it like I want to do a tour, but like I just accepted a few shows, you know what I'm saying? Because it sounded kind of cool. There's a thing called Hebrew Fest that sounds fire to me. I said, I'm doing it literally off the name. I saw the name and I said, that just sounds fire. I'm I'll not. do it. And I, and <laughs> yeah. I did it based on like a discount and everything because it sounded cool. That's how funny it is with me with shows. I'm like, yo, where's this at? On a farm called mm -hmm. Hebrew Fest? Bro, just give me that little bit of money. We're out there, bro. I'm out. Let's get it. Yeah. Man, that's crazy because we've got a show coming up this summer called Bryson Gray Fest. You should totally come. <laughs> you would love it, bro. You would bro, love it. Listen, I ain't gonna lie. I have Kip. the people. I have four artists that I know would make a dope tour, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's four bold Christian rap artists. They all have names. You know what I'm saying? We all have names. I just want to, because my Letter to the Church 2 album has been my most Christ, so successful Christian album. I have like four songs on there that did well. Yeah, Christ Walk, First Giant 3, you know what I'm saying? I got a few songs from that album that uh that did well. But I'm trying to see how far I can take this album. Because if I can get Letters if I can get letters to the Church 2, choose between Letters to the Church 2 and this album I just released, I feel like I have a great legendary set of songs I can do. So I'm trying to make sure I get this album the proper due credit. Right now, you got Holy Smoke going crazy. You got a song Ezekiel 3 going crazy. But see, I ain't, I don't have like a softer song that went crazy yet. And I feel like by some of my testimony from the album, I feel like it got potential. So I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Because when I do a show, come on, if, if the only songs that's lit is Christ Walk, Ezekiel 3, Holy Smoke, you know what I'm saying? Everybody get exposed. It's different styles, but they're all the same category of rap. Where it's like mm -hmm. lit rap. You know what I'm saying? And um, you know, I want to be able to, you know what I'm saying? I don't know, have different vibes throughout my set. I treat, I treat when I when I do my sets, I treat it like a science. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start off like this and talk right here, say these exact words. Mm -hmm. You know, I come from performing back in the day where you had to put on a show. You know? Put on the show. <laughs> Gotta put on the show, man. Matter of fact, <laughs> going back to I put on a show. Talk about Travis Porter now. You know what I'm saying? Like that was yeah. That yeah. was it. Like, if you wasn't putting on a show on that stage, bro, like, it was nothing. And that was, man, I missed that era, man. Because that was... you know this as a DJ, crowd control is so important. Who, boy. Yes. Listen. As a comedian, as a professional comedian for as, as a, comedian, a you know decade. That. Yes, yes. Yeah, you crowd must control, control that crowd. is so yeah. important. Like, mm -hmm. you got you to gotta play the right song at the right time. And especially if you're a musician, the transition if, if it fit, your transition can make it super lit or regular, you know what I'm saying? Like that simple mm -hmm. transition could be the catalyst for something like that. So, like I said, when, when I do a tour, I wanted to be like, lit. I did a test run in like Chicago, it was fire, but I'm gonna be frank, it was a little bit too political for me. I don't want politicians speaking at my, my concerts. No, I wanted right. to be really about God, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Well, you and, need a uh, U tour. You need somebody who puts together a tour for you. You know what I mean? That is a Bryson Gray tour. So it's what you want. Also, by the way, your next song, your next huge song, bro. I I mean, I don't know, like if it's a plan to do it later, and I don't want you to be sleeping on it. Virtuous, yeah. A song that that a man bro. can play with his wife and woman in the car, dude. My bro. my woman went crazy, dude. That's a million, dude. You're sitting on it right now. Just give me 10% for reminding bro, you. Bro, listen, but this, that, that will be your biggest selling. On my bro, word, it, that's going to be your biggest seller. I think Virgins is going to go crazy. So right now, how I'm doing social media, like everything's about the algorithm, unfortunate, because your followers mm -hmm. don't matter. So I have to outwork everybody, which I like doing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, hardest, working, hardest working artists out there, period. But um, but with Virtuous, I think Virtuous is going to go. I think Virtuous yes. is a better song than Homemakers. Me personally, probably because it's new, so of course artists are gonna like their newer stuff. That's just common sense. But verses is I'm really reading off Bible verses in it, and it's still lit. It's just, I just gotta post it at the right time, and it's gonna go. Right now, from the album, the only two that went crazy on social media so far is Holy Smoke and Ezekiel Three. But it's only been three weeks. You know what I'm saying? And Ezekiel Three just caught fire on social media this week. You know what I'm saying? Holy Smoke caught fire the first week I released it. I think Virgil is gonna go. 
I just gotta, I gotta, it's gonna, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's gonna go, bro. I hope yeah, it does. And you were, you were on the same top five with kind of, I think top five or his record was three and yours was six, but congratulations on iTunes, man, having a top 10 record on iTunes in the past couple of weeks, man. Thank you. I could have went, I, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I told I could have went number one. I, I instead used my marketing tactics to promote the streaming platforms. And the reason why is because with iTunes, you're going to have a big week, but then that's it. And trying to promote the streaming services after it doesn't work the same. So we release music. That first week is your slot to whatever you're promoting. Make sure you do it. I didn't promote iTunes. I may have tweeted about it, getting up on the charts once or twice. But my, through my text message services on Instagram, when people heard me talk, Spotify, Spotify, Apple, 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 Pandora, Amazon Music, because that's what a real battlefield is. And, you know, Kanye not going to admit this, but people going back to iTunes Pro and iTunes, MAGA rap started that. Let's be honest. Nobody was talking back about iTunes again until MAGA rap, a genre, no disrespect, I created. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's what got iTunes popping. That's why Billboard did a whole article about how iTunes don't really matter. Nobody mm -hmm. uses iTunes. And then Let's Go Brandon ended up in the Hot 100 because of that iTunes. But even mm -hmm. with Let's Go Brandon, it's the same thing, bro. If you don't send people to the streaming services, they're not going to go. So right. I, I've spent most of my time trying to get people to that Spotify, Apple, Pandora, Amazon, YouTube music. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what people typically listen to music. So I have to try to get that on track. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's it's a smart play, man. Especially in knowing that's where they are. Um, it's it's just funny seeing that you know streaming is where it is now. And like I was telling people, I started my internet radio station in 2009, 2010, right? And was like, yo, I'm gonna go ahead and get in here now because they're getting rid of CD players in a car. And we're yeah. getting aux cords and we're getting Bluetooth. So, like, I'm going to create this station. I know you're finna be listening here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set up the 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 um foundation and I'm gonna be ready. Oh, you wild. This was before this was cumulus was still cumulus radio. It was not iHeart Media at the time. There was yeah. no iHeart, you know. Like yep. it was like, yo, this is where it's gonna be. Oh no, nah, you tripping. No, nah, that's not gonna happen. All right, bet. Watch what happens. Sure enough. Cumulus becomes our heart media. They have the iHeart radio app and everybody's streaming and streaming. And I'm just sitting here looking like bro, bro knows because I'm pro. Let's bro, keep moving forward. <laughs> bro, e even now, me and Tyson James, we got an all CCG website. Cause we, we didn't got sense, we got sister so much. We say we come out with our own website. And basically, people mm -hmm. pay seven bucks a month to get access to everything we've ever done. You know what I'm saying? And discount code plus there's a 24 hour Christian radio station on there, Christian rap radio okay. station on there. And what we're about to do, we don't have an app yet, but when we create the app, we're gonna have it to where you can really just pay like four bucks a month for the radio station. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You can play, you know, because a lot of people enjoy the radio station from the app. A lot of people don't even care about me and Tyson's music and stuff being on there. They like we like the we like the 24 hour radio station. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we we're about to try to it's 24 hours already, but we're about to try to have that to where like that's the main focus of like the website and the app and stuff like because i think that's what uh i think people yearning for something like that and you, yeah. you got k-love but k-love like you're not about to hear no rap on there yeah and see that's that's where i'm at it's like i don't uh i'll like you're in rotation already over there you know what i'm saying Let's but go. you're you're just you're mixed in with I, I know you're not a fan of secular music but it's mixed yeah. in with secular music because like i shoot for the younger people so yeah. I have to be able to sprinkle it now. It's not the rough, crazy secular music because that's not how I get down. But you'll hear, you'll hear Chris Brown, you know, you may hear a poppy future, but you're not finna yeah. hear the the crazy future. Like, I'm not giving nah, them that. Hit me in with them so people can know the difference. You feel that, me? That, you, and you that's what I do. That's yeah. what I do. There's there's you, there's my brother Smooth, um, yeah. there's my brother uh, uh, Clay Hodges. Your guys' music is completely different than that. So, like, when it comes on and they're here, they're like, oh, hold on, who is that? What's that? And the app is saying, oh, Bryson Gray, Tyson James, Smooth, uh, Clay Hodges. Like, oh, okay, yeah, let me, let me go find this person and listen to this person's music. You know, like, I want to eventually not have none of those other artists. I want it to be all independent artists. That's what I want with a little bit of 
the other mu- you know, yeah. the the independent Wiz Khalifa sprinkled in there, the big crit sprinkled in there. Like, you know, like I want that. So it's like, okay, there's some good mainstream that's on a good positive kick. And then there's the the new mainstream, right? Because we're going to be mainstream amongst the people. You got what Holly Weird is pushing is mainstream. And then you got what we are telling you is main street. There's mainstream and there's main street. These are the main street artists right here that we know that the people in the streets are mainly listening to because this is what they truly want in life. That's the yeah. mission. So, you know, right. man, we're just gonna keep going, man. We got Speaking a whole of bunch artists, of questions, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna drop this one because it just yeah. works for the where we're at right now, collaborating, touring, playing music, being uh gospel rappers. Uh, this is LS. He's a good listener. We love you, LS. Thank you. Faithful and consistent. Do you consider Lecrae as a gospel rapper? I mean, technically, he's under the, the genre of Christian rap, so I can't say no, but he himself said he's not a Christian rapper. He's a rapper who's Christian. Whatever that means, that's up for y'all. I know what it means, but whatever you want right. to think. Um, Me, personally, I don't listen to Lecrae, um, and I'm not against people that listen to Lecrae. Let me, and people get confused when I say this. I think in, in the Bible, there's the milk and the meat, or solid food, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. The milk are for the babes in Christ. The solid food, the meat, is for the mature believers. So I believe when people's music... Oh, snap. Where he, he good. He good. Oh, he good. Okay. oh I, I, I believe Still here. Um, the, the, the milk is good for a specific group of people. And I think Lecrae's music is milk. My problem with him personally is you've been making milk for 20 years or something like that, I guess. Or however long he's been in the Christian rap scene. Mm-hmm. And, he, and I, we've never gotten solid food from Lecrae. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the milk is necessary for the people milk necessary to. I'm not listening to milk personally. Right. Um, it doesn't help me in my walk or in my spirit. It does. It just does nothing for me. Um, yeah. but I mean, technically he is a Christian rapper, so, <clears throat> or a gospel rapper. So I can't say no to that. Well, maybe he's just a milkman, you know, and there's some <laughs> people who just, you know, <laughs> this is just what they do. No, I, I don't provide you the perfect cut steaks from the cow. My only thing from the cow that I give you is out of these udders. I'm the milkman. I take care of the babe. And, you know, <laughs> look, if that's what it is that he decides to do, you know, I, I, I won't be one to beat up on them. I'll just understand that's your lane. Some people are just, they're lane people. You know, they just, I'm comfortable here. This is where I found out that I was great in. They're not going to be in different genres of music. You know, they're not going to put on a big MAGA hat, even though they know, shoot, this may hurt my music career, but I still want to put out this type of music. Just a few, just last few months, right? Three stacks. Drops a flute album, right? Composed of all instruments, all different types of facets of instruments. And we know that he's a musician that loves instruments. You know, people got mad. Why did he put out a flute album? He's a musician. Does he and want? this is where he wanted to be. Bro, people going to be doing the same thing on the 7 7 project. Yep. I do not care. I like making what I like creating. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm doing it for God, I'm going to do. Like when I drop this reggae song, I know a lot of my rap fans not gonna like it. When I drop this R and B song, I know people are not gonna like it. When I drop like you know what I'm saying, when I drop this country song, some people don't, don't not gonna like it. I do not care. Right. You know what I'm saying? When when, when you're an artist, you want to put it out there and just put it out there for the people that do like it. I'm making it for yeah. those that do like it, not for those yeah. that don't. You know. So like the Andre the Thousand thing, I thought it was like I didn't listen to it myself. But I really respected the fact that he was willing to say, I'm releasing an album and I know people have been wanting a rap album from me for so many years, but I want to play my flutes. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what he did. Mm-hmm. I respect that because that's what that's what that's what I do. Man, it was some good meditation. Look, look, it was a couple of days me and my daughter woke up to that music playing, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And it was, <laughs> yeah, bro. And it and it puts you in a completely different mindset you know so like i'm watching so right now one of the greatest shows on tv right now is shogun mike can attest i don't know if you watch it bros but shogun i watched the first episode it's kind of fire yes bro listen bro when you start getting through it you're gonna be like oh 
snap. Well, wait, that's the one where just... so the first episode they came, they went to the Asian place in the ship, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. and there's an argument yes. of like Protestantism versus like calling to the yeah. heresy. Catholicism, stuff, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Awesome yep. That's it. I yes. thought it was very intriguing. Yes. Oh, bro, listen. As you get through it, it's a beautiful show. It is beautiful, but it put me in the mind of like as I'm as I listen to the to the flute music, right? As I listen to the instrumentations and what they're building, it puts me in the mind of of the Japanese and just living amongst them, just living in their homes. And the the whole setting and the soundtrack that is set there, it's like, man, this is peaceful. I feel like a shogun, you know. I feel like I want to yeah. go pick up a katana and just just get one with the world, you know. Yeah. Um. It's it, it was been, amazing. I would have been a Ronin, but yeah, it's because you know few people know the difference between a shogun, a samurai, a Ronin, and a ninja, and they all came from the same place. But basically, uh, the Ronin was the one who uh, either his master had died, been beaten in battle. Or he had a Greek mm-hmm. disagreement with his master. So he was basically a samurai for hire. And then, you know, the Shogun is the general of the samurai. And then the ninja, many of those uh, were samurai, but they were like the special forces. They were the mm-hmm. ones that were like the special elite of the elite. The samurai, uh, the key with them is they knew their names. And to die in battle was an honor. And to carry that family name, the ninja, you never knew who they were. They were secret guys. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm all about that stuff. Um, yeah. and I'm a nerd about it. And one thing I love, you know, living in Hawaii and, and experiencing and, and, and going to Japan, I love that part of their culture. I love the fact that they they bow to each other and say hello in a kind way. And, and the mm-hmm. fact that it's very important that you look after your neighbors and uh, you have a responsibility uh, to your community. I, I, I uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, your surroundings and things. I love that. It used to be the hood. That was the hood, you know, 30, 40 years ago. You knew Miss Polly down the street. And you don't you do do not. I I wish you would do something that you know your parents wouldn't approve of. Because you're going to get your butt whooped from wherever you was all the way to the house. And then they're going to tell your mama. And your mama's going to beat your butt. And she's going to tell your daddy. And when your daddy get home, he going to beat your butt. You know, like. When I was growing up in the church. Your parents are the only people that can whip you. For real. You feel For me? For real. Everybody Your pastor had, could and, whip you. Yes. Pastor, yeah. shoot. The, the, it the, the, didn't the, matter. The, anybody in there, if, if you would do something you're supposed to be doing, you can get you a spanking. It was equal opportunity, boy. Yeah. Equal that's, opportunity. That's, that's why kids grow up depressed and with no respect for their elders nowadays. Kids ain't getting mm-hmm. no whoopers, bro. Name nine. <laughs> Well, you know, everybody be whooping as abusive now. It's it's, it's abuse to, to whip your kids. I, I know I forgot, I forgot. I found that on Twitter. That's such a controversial topic. I'm like, that's so weird. Because when I growing up, like this is just normal. Like, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? I, mean, I turned out fine. I, I think hey, I turned out. Hey, pretty I'm well. one thing about black folk: the gang bang and murderous of that. I can't stand it. They definitely respect their elders. They say yes, ma'am. They say no, ma'am. They say yes, sir. They say no, sir. You know what I'm saying? They, they 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 take care of like, you know what I'm saying? The grandma, you know what I'm saying? Like that. That's one thing I will say. This, but but I feel like it's because you know what I'm saying. We had to respect people growing up. Well, in the South, at least I can't speak about it up north. Right, right, definitely in the South, boy, because it was just a different thing. The only one who didn't respect the elders was the one that everybody knew was thrown off. Yeah, and we did what we had to do to stay away from the thrown off. Yeah. Yeah. And like, and when the throat off one finally ended up taking his dirt nap, like his grandmama and them gonna get the love and respect, but in the side, but we showed it. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, bro, bro, I, I, bro, I know the most gangster people. I know real gangsters. You see them around somebody, grandma, they mama, mm-hmm. you do be like this is the nicest guy I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And one thing yeah. got it. Mm-hmm. And he'll leave so- there and go execute somebody. <laughs> Before we get completely off the topic, which we are, but uh, uh, LS asks, have you thought about a no. collab with Loza? Like, and then I was going to say, do you know who Absolutely. that is? Yeah. No. Yes. Let, me, let me tell something about Loza. And like, whatever he going through, what he going through, I'm not saying it's no shade out. I don't listen. Cause I know if I say to something about him, he'll make a video about me tomorrow because he's, he's crazy. But listen, that man is crazy. Um, yeah. This is the thing people don't understand. I do not charge people for features. If I feel like you're trying to do it for a real genuine reason for the culture and I like the song, I will do a song for free. This is a constant theme. I've always been like this. Lozo's one of those people who had no following, 
He was trying to make the MAGA music. He asked me for a feature. He sent me a song called Post and Delete. I thought it was pretty cool. I did it for him for free. You know what I'm saying? Posted it on my YouTube community tab, retweeted on Twitter, shared it on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. He got angry at me because I didn't post it on my main Instagram feed. I told him, I said, bro, just posting a song on your Instagram feed is just not good content. We need a video, you know, let's shoot a video. Like I said it everywhere else, but just posting just the audio on my Instagram feed is just that's terrible marketing. I was like, that's like, that's like terrible. You know what I'm saying? And he said, oh, you, you doing this because you don't want me to take your fans. I'm like, what? Like, I'm like, it was the most weirdest thing yeah, I've ever experienced. Me. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then he like kept texting me long messages. One thing about me. Listen, man, I can tell people I'm a blunt person. I don't deal well with overly emotional men. I don't. If you see me text messages, that's too long. I'm not going to read them. And I'm a, out of respect. I'm going to tell you I'm not reading it because I don't want you to think I did. Loza was sending me these long messages. And then he kept saying, like, calling me vowel words after I did something for him for free out of the kindness of my heart. And I texted him. I said, bro, you are acting like a female. You know what he did? Instead of responding privately, he went live and told everybody. Went he live. Said, yeah, he did a live and said, Bryson said, I'm acting like a girl. And I said, yep, because you were. And then with the Let's Go Brandon thing, he painted another narrative because for some reason, I didn't know he created Let's Go Brandon. And he, was, he wasn't even the first person to make a Let's Go Brandon song from Country Art as well. So country Art, he just didn't, it just didn't go viral. And everybody was dropping Let's Go Brandons. I didn't drop one. I thought it was cringe. Because everybody was putting the, the, the chant in there. And I was like, that's cringe. The only reason I made a Let's Go Brandon song, because the guy named Black Conservative Preacher literally texted me and said his son wants a Let's Go Brandon song without profanity in it because everybody else is having profanity in it. Pulled on my heartstrings for the kids. I made a Let's Go Brandon song in 20 minutes. I got Tyson on it. I got Chandler Crump on it just in case it did go viral. Mm -hmm. I would like to get somebody else to go viral with me because I don't really care about it. Mm -hmm. So if it does go viral, we all benefit. It went viral. Loza starts saying we stole his title. Let's go, Brandon. Is just something that went viral because somebody said something on the news. It has nothing to do with you. Like he is a guy that is very full of himself. And uh, even during the Let's Go Brandon thing, let me tell you how crazy he is. He would text me for advice on music and then go live about me and talk junk about me. So no. He tried to be cool with me again afterwards, but he had three strikes. Everybody get three strikes with me. I forgive him. I'm not angry at Los Alexander, but based on his personality, I'm good. Like I don't, I'm not about to be attacking him on the internet, but I'm not collabing with Los Alexander. I'm like that's not just that will never happen. Yeah, man, the grift, the grift is real with the guy, and I, you know, just like everybody, just like when it came to Mike, I told you this time and time again. I give everybody their fair shake when it comes to this, right? Because this is a tough space for us to be in. Like, I'm true to this. I'm far from new to this. I didn't jump on because of, nah, I was here, been here. So when I see people coming into the sphere, it's like, all right, you know, I ain't going to call it onboarding, but I know that you need some type of uh, some type of conversation. You need some uh, a friend, a confidant within this, you know, that's been through. So I'm going to go see what's up. And then, you know, we see we move from there. Um, reached out. We allegedly were a part of the same frat. Allegedly. It's still out you there. At, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a PB. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. Allegedly, oh, nah, he, he's definitely a fake PB. He, he had, yeah, a I know, PBs I know, him. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's why I said, like, I get like, I'm real deal, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm yeah. real deal in the state of Georgia. Well, well, oh, uh, he's 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 faking the funk, bro. Like, no, no, like, he's posing, he's like, he tried to get the PBs against me, and I'm like, bro, I've been outside with the PBs for real. You, you see, get, <laughs> like, he may get a few of them to be against me, but you're not gonna get PBs in general against me. I because I've been in the streets with them for real. Yeah, you know, pro you is know one, saying? pro yeah. is yeah. one, full on, full on, pro yeah, yeah, yeah. protocol oh, oh, right there yeah, is a yeah. full on, yeah, 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 full on, yeah, yeah. So I didn't know, I didn't know that y'all were the same, the same, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so he's just, yeah, he now he's he's you know, out west, and, and I'm here in Georgia, right? So when I heard. I was like, 
oh, word? Okay, I see him. He's doing this, that, and the third. I want to connect because, again, like, I'm a black conservative, right? I'm, I'm a Geechee conservative, as I call myself. I'm a Geechee conservative. It's not too many of us that's willing to stand up and say we're conservative. So I need to know, are you real mm-hmm. or is you grifting? You know what I mean? Because if you grifting, then... Bro, I'm out here taking real slings and arrows yep. out here in these streets yep. for this. I am not finna let you get away with the griff. Like, it's not gonna happen. Just like, yep. you know, Mike, I tell you all the time, like, I literally have to answer, and I know Bryce can, can, can attest, I have to answer for the things that Candace Owens says out of her mouth. And it's <laughs> not that I want to answer for it, but it's the fact that because I'm Black, and I'm in the conservative line of things, they automatically attach and line us and link us Every up time. to being that just it's just you we're here. It's like, no, no, it's it's not that. Don't make me answer for that. So being that it's that way, at least you don't have to answer for Steven Crowder. <laughs> and you're 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 so lucky that you don't have to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like yeah, no. because it's the like because it's just a, a you know, back to the big tent. There's a big tent of white people that are a part of the conservative, so it could go either way. Because it's not so many of us over there, you know, it's like, okay, well, you guys yeah. all must think the same. It's like, no, bro, yep. it's not that. <laughs> we don't move that way. But because you're holding me to that standard, okay, cool. Every last one of these people, I am going to see what's up. And then if it's bad, then I'm going to check. That's why, you know, I will forever feel about how I do about Candace, not because of just the stuff that she says, but because, again, when we were at the White House and that woman, cl- at, when it's all of us, all of us young black folk, we just heard Trump say, you African-Americans, you built this nation and you're just now getting credit for it. Right? Like we're hearing history go down. And those were the days that he got the subpoenas, which eventually ended up being the whole impeachment process situation. Like we were literally a part of history that day. And for a history making young black man to walk up to you and say, you know, hey, Miss Owens, I sacrificed my, you know, 10 plus year Twitter in defense of you because of what happened with T.I. and them on revolt. And I feel like that was vile. And because I'm in Georgia and they know me, I'm going to speak up for you to clutch your purse on me like they say the white women clutch their purses and we're on the grounds of the white house we ain't even left out of trump fence yet i ain't gonna mess with you we still it we still we bought the big trucks with the big guns i'm not gonna do nothing to you because you his you his darling he loves you i'd be a fool to mess with the chick that he loves i'd be a fool right but you treated me that way i see where you're at with it and then i watch how you know essentially how Bryson got treated and how the rest of the people like, cause like y'all don't know what we know from Blexit. Y'all have no idea what we were seeing in the background in the telegram chats and everything else that was going on with Blexit. <laughs> bro, if I'm lying, please check me, bro. If I'm lying, check me. It's a lot of people don't know about the budget stuff. People don't know that every time I perform for Blexit, I did it for free. And they were trying not to let me perform. King Face forced them to let me perform with yes. him on stage. Yes. That's why I said what I said about, look, some God, me and God going to have to sit down and have a conversation for him to be like, yeah, no, King Face just died on XYZ. They didn't take him out. Because I feel like he was getting too much. He was getting too real. He was getting ready to outshine uh, Mr. Pancake and Mr. Cop. He was about to out. He was he was he was eclipsing them because he, like me, was in the streets like Bryson was in the streets talking Bryson, to regular everyday black people. Do you know who he's referring to when he says Mr. Pancake? Nah. <laughs> See, what's funny is just so you know, people know on Mr. the Cotton. outside. I'm white... a Tatum. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then um, what's his name? I I just call Terrence. him Mr. Oh, Terrence, Terrence Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Terrence. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pancake, pancake, pancake. Terrence with Terrence with Terrence, Terrence with yeah. 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 Oh, that's funny. but but that, I will say, man, that's a shout out to you, uh, Bryson, because I mean, you know, from people on the inside kind of looking out and people who understand how much of a grifter you're not. I mean, we all know you could be on the campaign tour right now. You know, you could be I'm making money. real money, showing up in a red hat. You know what I mean? Getting people excited. You know, there there are lots of packs. Yeah. 
Say again. Bro, when I was a uh, uh you remember um during COVID they had a Republican National Convention? Yeah on TV. Mm-hmm. I was on it. And when, yeah. when I went to Florida to shoot it, they um they 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 offered me to come perform pretty much before Dominant Silk spoke at every event. They said I was gonna be in the private jets and everything. Then out of nowhere, there was a campaign against me. People were sending the campaign my, my lyrics, some of my songs. Bryson is homophobic. <clears throat> and um I got a message from Trump campaign and basically like sort of like asked me to apologize. I said no. I apologize because to do something with Trump. Like, oh, stupid. Like, what? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna wear a MAGA hat, not afraid of my actual peers. What makes you think I'm gonna be afraid of Trump himself? Are you crazy? So mm-hmm. I said no. And they said, um, uh, and they said, uh, they said, listen, I respect you. We play your music right here, but we just can't prop up, you know what I'm saying? People that are homophobic. Um, and, and I that's Trump got- people. That's yeah. Trump people that said that. Yeah, I never got posted. About- you notice I was getting propped up heavy by the Trump campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Then you mm-hmm. never see me probably. So fun fact, there was a digital list of people that Trump would retweet and try to prop up every once in a while on Twitter. I was in that group of people, you know what I'm saying, that every once in a while I get a Trump retweet. I mean, you never knew when mm-hmm. it was going to happen, but you know you want the list for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and Republican National Convention, they were playing me outside the rallies, my part outside the rallies. Next thing you know, you never heard Bryson Gray name again from the Trump campaign people. Just like out of nowhere, it just mm-hmm. happened because they, they said basically I was just too homophobic. Yeah, I guess that's why I said, man. He had he had the wrong people around him, which is what makes this time right here. Like I'm watching and I'm paying attention is interesting. It's still another group. It's a it's a completely different group of people outside of a few a few key figures so it's like all right what are you guys doing now so i'm watching all the blacks go down to mar-a-lago and have the conversations i'm seeing the things that's that's revving up it's like all right what's happening here what are we about to get um what trump trying to do he's trying to please everybody yeah Uh, the only issue of pleasing everybody it it will it worked he actually tried this in 2020 it worked better for him because there was so much fake news about trump that mm-hmm. he, even if you heard something that was true about Trump, you didn't like, you just assumed it was fake news. Like mm-hmm. a lot of stuff I found that was true in the last two years, because I just I assumed every bad thing somebody said about Trump was fake news. The issue is when he started promoting the jab, it sort of broke a kink in his armor a little bit. So now people are yeah. more open to saying, Hold on, is this true? And now we'll do research and proper research. So right now, like he tried to sell a Bible, which is just disrespectful, but then he mm-hmm. also is about to hold a uh, uh, he's about to hold a fundraiser with gay people, a LGBT fundraiser. Yeah, Trump, you know what I'm saying. And yeah. and it's like he's basically trying to please everybody, everybody, but that doesn't work. In no point in history would that work because when you're trying to please this group, you're gonna piss mm-hmm. off this group. His problem is he's trying to please everybody in too in too in too much of an extreme way, mm-hmm. and it's, I think it's backfiring. I still think he's gonna win because people are just Joe Biden did such a terrible job. Right. But Trump is like losing key groups of people that would otherwise clearly vote for him. Yeah, that that is true. Um, I I see it. So I I looked at because I'm 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 with people on the jab. I don't believe in the jab. I don't like the jab. I am I'm just I am I am diametrically against the jab and everything that it is. With that being said, I know that. If he would not have warp speed, right? And and I'm talking about the I love the whole of warp speed and everything that was involved. See, there's people who don't know about, you know, the little machines, the O3 gas machines that you could go sit in a room and it would spray and completely disinfect the room. Um, the way that um far UV ray lighting came into the forefront where you could set these far UV gray lights up at the door of a business and you walk through and all the germs, whatever, you know, disease was there that could be airborne died instantly because of those far UV ray lightings, the pieces that you could put inside the air returns um, to clean. It would clean the air of whatever, you know, vicinity that it is in like, those are all things that was pushed in the forefront that nobody paid attention to. Now, I did. You can, you know, on my Rumble for those listeners, you can go on, um, you can go on my Rumble page, and one of the first 
videos that I did, which is like further down on the back pages, it talks about, you know, how Trump was the only person who truly cared during COVID, right? Because he put out multiple things. The problem came in with the vaccine is that we were shut down and we got people like, you know, my grandmother, my auntie, lady that I went to church with, a lot of your grandparents or, or elders that we know that was not coming out their house, no matter what, I don't care what happened, somebody was going to have to say, hey, we have a vaccine that's going to protect you from this right here, right? They just wasn't going to move. The country was going to stay closed. The world was going to stay closed because they felt like they didn't have something, some option to fight it. And it was that option because as soon as they said it, remember now, uh, every Democrat, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, everybody, we're not taking no Trump shot. I don't care about none of that. If he had something to do with it, I'm not going to take it. And then they steal the election. January rolls around. Oh, excuse me. He, they steal the election and December rolls around and you see pictures and videos of them getting their shots, right? This is them easing the idea to the people who they just pulled the cheat over on, right? To continue pulling the rest of the cheat, which was the lie about this here, um, uh, China disease, right? Well, so then, you know, we, we move a little further. And then they say, okay, guys, these jabs are available for the ones who want to take it. And this to protect you and everybody else is there. But you guys got it. So you're not going to catch and everybody else. Let's open back up now. Yay. And and it, it, it was the big lie. You know what I'm saying? It was, like, but it wasn't quite like that. Because even when the vaccines rolled out, it still took a full year for everything to open back up. That's why people have it was requiring vaccine passports. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you know e even then. But with, with the jab, Trump called himself the father of it. Trump also mm -hmm. called his own supporters a cult. He said, if I was president, everybody would get the jab. Everybody would support it. People, he said people only don't want it because Joe Biden is president, which is ignorant because most Christians were against it in this inception. Like from, mm. I called it demonic from the beginning. I and, see, I missed that part, but I, I trust you. So, Pro just got educated by little bro. Keep going. Oh, no, no, no. no yeah, 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 no, no, yeah. Yeah, but uh, Trump, like there's a lot of things Trump said surrounding this specific thing. And at first I was with him because it seemed like he was, you know, I was into the crazy conspiracies. And I was like, well, Trump, what he means is the HCQ and blah, 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 blah. But then he made it very, very clear. He was talking about the jabs. And I'm like, no, yeah. Trump, no. And then when Candace Owens, who was the only person slightly brave enough to challenge him on his view of the jab, he pretty much got very, very angry with her. We never seen her able to interview Trump again. Um, and uh, yeah, I, and that's not even the only reason why Trump has let me down personally, but that was the a chink in the armor that made me realize that it's odd. Because yeah. from a Christian perspective, the jab is to a lot of Christians, and I'm going to talk about me, I don't think the jab was the antichrist. I think it was the test run to see if people would accept the mm -hmm. antichrist. Mm -hmm. And um, so what that means is, since Trump called himself the father of it, it makes me think he is a, a part of us ringing the antichrist. I don't think Trump is the antichrist. I know there's a lot of people that are ex-Trump supporters that say Trump is the antichrist. I don't think he's the antichrist for one basic reason. He's just not smart enough, biblically. Trump. Well, and it says clearly in the word. It says clearly in Revelation that the Antichrist will be loved by all. Way too many people hate Trump. So yeah. he got the issue though. And he said he'd be a great There's uniter. No... Trump divides people. Now, whether you love him or hate him, look, I'm voting for Trump, and I have no problem saying yeah. that. But whether you love him or hate him, he's not a great uniter. You know, they a well, lot he's he's not, divided. But I, I don't know anybody. I don't even know music artists with the type of following Trump. Yeah. The closest group for a musical artist that has the Trump level of supporters is Kanye fans. Where like Trump, like he said, I think he could literally shoot somebody unjustly in the middle of Times Square. And I genuinely think a lot of people would not give a crap. You should hang but, out in the hotel Jesus chat more. Boom, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. I'm here on listen. Stuff. Listen, but but like I said, I don't think he's the Antichrist because the Antichrist is somebody that's intelligent with scripture. 
Trump cannot name a Bible verse to save his life. I hope they worked on that this campaign because somebody's gonna ask him, and he has called at least John three sixteen. Come on, brother, you know John three sixteen, Trump. Mm-hmm. You know that one. Just say it, bro. But I don't think it's correct. But I do think he's a part of us bringing it in because of the role he has played in the jab. But when it comes to LGBT abortion, like Trump has changed his tunes. Like on jabs, he changed his tunes like three different times. People don't understand that Trump was the most one of the most famous vaccine critics. Yep. Literally, if people go watch the 2015 primaries, him and Ben Carson started getting too close to be friends. Mm-hmm. And the way they split Trump and Ben Carson up is with the jab because Trump was known to criticize him. Ben Carson was always a support of it. Mm-hmm. And, and and because that's what Trump was known for. So for him to go to that to what he's doing now is crazy. His pro-life, pro-choice journey is just flipping tables i never seen them like it he i really wanted to talk to you about that real fast uh, let me ask you a quick question mm-hmm. just a quick question and I, mm-hmm. i'm not challenging you i just want to know your thoughts on it no i like being um, challenged You're good yeah and i know i see you go hard on your stuff Man, sometimes i'll be logging into your spaces just to like see you talk and people just go out i'm like stop let me let let the man speak anyway uh do you think it's realistic nowadays to have even a christian pro hard pro-life uh, president because of the way the laws are do you think that either and and so we have to roll it back to states because that's a big step right federal federally mandating you must make it legal taking that away is huge to me and then you you mandate it back to the states and then the states that are are uh you know and then you can start working on it on the the federal level of making it completely illegal do, do you I, know what i'm saying there I disagree. I know what you're saying. Okay. I've heard it before, but it's just not it's just not true. The, the the first logic that a lot of conservatives use that has never been true is they say, well, we have to start with this and then end up with this. That's, that's never how it happens. The Republican Party, if whatever way is trending is where it's going to end up. And right now it's trending left. And on almost every topic known to man, Republicans has trended left. This logic, this new LGBT, we say, oh, we have to allow this. And then once we get in, we do this. What happened with the Republican Party? Now over 50% of the Republican Party supports same-sex marriage. Now you see a bunch of people defending. We went from Trump, the way he said in the last few weeks, to Kerry Lake literally being against a, a, a abortion uh, bill in the state. You know what I'm saying? So people can't leave it up to states, but now look what Republicans are doing. Now they're like, no, we don't mm-hmm. want to stay. And it's the same excuse every time. We need to win the election. I think people are not pinning their finger on the on the culture for real. I think society, especially younger folk, are trending more my direction than liberal direction. Mm-hmm. Liberals had it for That's the past true. 20 years or so. But if you but people are so fed up with what liberals are doing that people are now swinging more my direction. Mm-hmm. I don't Republicans don't call that extreme. I think actually trying to play both sides is the is not a good move because all you're going to do is anger people. There's a guy, I forgot his name, super Christian Baptist dude. Oh, what city is he in, man? Dusty Devers, right? Never heard of him in my life. Do you know why I know him? He's getting so much press. He's gotten millions of dollars of donations. Just a small town guy because he's so biblical. Mm. He's saying abortion flat out be illegal. Homosexuality is abomination. He's saying things that Christians would think is too harsh. He's getting more donate uh, donations than every other person he's running against some small town because people all over the freaking country is supporting this guy. The the, the future it is extreme if that's what people want to call it when it's really it was normal 10, 20 years ago. Um, so I do think abortion can be illegal federally because I mean, you know, it was illegal in it should much. be. It it absolutely should be. I mean, right, right. But but it was like this in the country before, but not only that. The problem with leaving it to the states, I'm glad I live in Tennessee. This is illegal here. The issue is, let's say if I have a homegirl, she got pregnant. She want to get abortion. All the states that do allow it, they make special, um, they make special exceptions for people from other states. She can just drive to Georgia and get an abortion. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can't, can't get one here. I think you can get abortions in Georgia, right? Heartbeat bill. Well, we have we have a heartbeat bill. It got stayed for a second. 
it got stayed, but it, it came back in clear as day. Hey, we voted for it. It, it came through. Yeah, um, but, but, yeah. But, she, but she knew she was pregnant like a month in. She could go to Georgia and get it and, and, and get and get an she still have two months to get or two weeks to get an abortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, long, if, as, the, as long as the heartbeat isn't detected. Once the heartbeat detected, then you know, yeah, yeah. Sorry, so, in Tennessee, it's flat out illegal. Like it's flat out illegal. Yeah, yeah I, I'm in Oklahoma where abortion is so illegal now that they pulled a, a husband and or a, a boyfriend girlfriend over, and they were headed out of state to get an abortion, and they charged them with a uh, uh, conspiracy to commit out of state crime. So hey, yeah, if every state had important. that, if uh, yeah. every Listen, if every state had that, I, I would be for leaving. The, if every state has something to where it's like you can't even leave the state, because here's the thing: the way this country was set up, it's like each state was supposed to be ran as sort of its own country, as anyway. its own country, yeah, as yeah. its own country. It yeah, was. Yeah. A, that's what it is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's, yeah, that's what, that's what it was. And if, if 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 we were ran like that, I wouldn't mind that because I wouldn't have to deal with the people anyway. Like, so I'll be living in an entirely different, you know, stratosphere. But the fact that everything is pretty much one and treated as one now in most cases, um, yeah, it, 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 it is what it is. But but if every state can say, listen, you can't even go out of state, that actually saved lives. Because because you're not really – if somebody wanted an abortion, they'll drive three hours to get an abortion. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll, they'll drive three hours. It's not like it being illegal in Tennessee – you know, may save a few babies, but not as many as we think. It's it's more of a symbolic win than an actual like we're saving babies win. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you can get it pretty much anywhere. Um, and I think it's very much plausible that somebody more extreme from a Christian side will get more votes. The only reason yeah. you don't people don't know that yet is because nobody is running on that. If somebody ran on that, it has shocked the I think it has shocked the world. Mm -hmm. Do you know, do you know why I think Trump beat Hillary Clinton? I don't think it was really as had much to do with Trump's people think. I think it was literally because people didn't want a woman president. They I know many people that literally did not vote for Hillary Clinton because she was a woman. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those type of people, by the way. Mm -hmm. I would literally, before I vote for a woman, I would vote for anybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> well, she was a murderer. That's why I couldn't, you know, back in the day. That's What's funny yeah. is Hillary Clinton Trump is what started me back in the day on my whole change journey because I was a liberal liberal dude for a long time oh, you know really? what i mean and and you know chick with air t-shirts but you know being a comedian writer in that business you kind of have to be you know that's just the yeah the mindset and the thought process and then i uh told a friend of mine i, I couldn't vote for hillary because she kills people i was a bernie bro back then um and he just lit me up and you know i i was like what and then oddly enough stephen crowder was on he, he's the most popular so he was the most accessible and I, not a fan, but he does lay out great arguments. And these were just basic arguments of they're telling you to hate Trump, but look at this over here. And that just changed my whole perspective. Because as you know, when people, you know, artists, people like us, as soon as we catch a little bit of light and we're like, wait a minute, I haven't been told all of this stuff. And you start mm -hmm. researching and everything oh, comes to in. light. Is, it's a, yeah. Yeah. You, you that, dive in. Yeah. So, that's when so, I discovered you too. So, so I, yeah. I was a Bernie supporter, but here's the thing. If people actually go to the black community and talk to your average black male, we're 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 all conservative. Like we're okay. like we're literally more conservative than Ben Shapiro, for real. Especially, especially socially, we do not rock with homosexuals. Nope. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We not we not with it. Um, and but when I was born to Bernie, it was literally just because he was loud. Mm -hmm. It sounded like he was going against the establishment. But yeah. then when Trump came, he was yelling too. Except his policies, you start learning about more about politics. I'm like, oh, his policies actually are against what the establishment wants. Yeah, and that's pretty much what like I've never been a raging liberal. I've been controversial on the internet forever. I've been super pro life forever, super anti LGBT forever. But I always voted Democrat, just like most people. My, my grandma, you know, when they had the same sex marriage vote in North Carolina. My my grandma, the whole church, we was carpooling to mm -hmm. make sure everybody voted no. But them same mm -hmm. people went in that election election and voted Democrat. That's that's the thing people don't understand about the black community. Yeah. If if, if Republicans were smart and knew how to help, like just connect the dots, which they're connecting now, but it's not it's not because Republicans made the dots connect, it's because black people are like, wait, 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 wait. These dots just connecting. 
Mm-hmm. But if Republicans did a better job at letting black folk know, like, yo, this stuff y'all are against literally all comes from Democrats. It'll be, you know, we'll be in a much different climate where Republicans are not. Way, way different climate. But, but they're just, they're not that smart to, to put it together. And what's even worse, they're not even smart enough to let me and you, who are a part of this, to go over here and just have this conversation and just deal with them. You know what I'm saying? Just like, hey, just let us deal with it. You just, when we say we need the money, when we say we need the jet, when we say we need the, you know, whatever the resources is that you have, uh, that is that we use, bring it here. Outside of that, bro, let us handle this because we know how to handle Aunt and them. We know how to hold this conversation with them. We know how to, because to, now, man, I got dims right now that after that whole trans day of, of visibility on Easter, on Resurrection Sunday, oh man, they, boy, y'all thought it was bad when all of us started making those videos against Joe Biden when he said we ain't black. Man, listen, they out here hard body like, oh no, I'm independent. Oh, yeah. I they don't play about that. Nope. You know nope. the funniest nope. thing? You know the funniest thing though is it wasn't even really like true it, it worked though because the, the trans visibility thing was already a thing it just happened to fall this year on easter <laughs> it's, it's gonna fall it's gonna and, and it's gonna fall a few times on easter and that's what a yeah. lot of us were saying is like look you are you're the president obama because obama's the one who put it in there obama put it in by uh, by his vice president, i thought you right? meant currently because you yeah, could yeah, address no, no, i mean he, yeah, you could as, address yeah. them as the president yeah yeah it's, it's possible <laughs> actually you know what's funny I had a black person yesterday who told me, and she's a Democrat, and she told me this ain't nothing but Obama's third term. And I was like, oh, really? And she was like, yeah, you know Biden ain't running that, and people only vote for <laughs> Biden because of Obama. I was like, oh, okay. But she's still voting blue. But, um, well, I don't know. She might not vote blue no more because after yesterday, man, I kind of I kind of yeah, went my Honestly, I, I know a lot of black folk that's like just not voting. Yeah, voting for the couch. You know, yeah. and yo, I got up, uh, there is a couple of conservatives one in atlanta and one who's in the virginia area who got upset because i said hey look a lot of us are not policy educated okay so as bryson said just a second ago we will go vote against uh same-sex marriage being legal but we'll go vote for the people who put for same-sex marriage to be legal on the ballot. We will do that because we just, you're black, you vote Democrat. That's just what it is. I'm so telling you, that's how you since talk. Since we're not politically uh, sound, right, when it comes to policy, a lot of us are going to not vote. I'm okay with them not voting. I'm okay with them voting on the couch. So we can take this time to educate them on policy. And then in turn, we can put our own candidates up there. Mike, you've heard me say this time and time again. Yes, I deal with the Republicans because there's only two parties that they put in this system for me to play with right now. But if y'all would just smarten up and say, hey, we can put another party in there and we created a whole nother party, we will pull people from the Democrat Party. We will pull people from the Republican Party. They will come in one of our new party is that is common sense based and we would mop the floor with on both of them just easily, you know, Shout out Steph Colonel, we, but yeah. What's up, Steph K? What up, Pimpin? Um, you were saying the same thing, just what you were saying. Okay, yeah, man, they're 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 uh they're they're not going to vote for Biden this time, you know. They're they're looking at voting for Trump or not voting at all. And in the game of numbers, that's what we need. But we need them also, and this is the big part going up into this election this year. Whatever they do, we need them to be vocal on it. And pay attention to it, right? Because if we know that in the hood precincts, none of us go to vote, right? And then election comes around and they're like, oh, these precincts had the largest voter turnout turnout they've ever seen. And we're like, hold on, wait a minute. No, we didn't go vote. Where'd those numbers come from? We all know that we didn't vote, but you stuffed the ballot boxes and said that we went and voted and it didn't happen. We need to be vocal in, yeah, we're not voting or, yeah, we're voting for Trump or, yeah, we're voting for over here. We're voting for, um, what's my man's name? Um, Cornell West, whatever the case may be, whoever you vote, which I don't agree with. But what I'm saying is 
be vocal on your vote and pay attention. If you in this precinct that has 1,200 people registered to vote and 800 of you go vote for Cornell West and not Biden and not Trump, but you look at the numbers and it says Cornell West didn't get any vote, you guys need to be vocal and say, hey, this isn't the truth here. We all know we went and voted for Cornell West. You know what I mean? And and vice versa. That is how we're going to break this system come this November because they're going to, try, if, if we do have an election, and honestly, with what just took place with Iran and Israel on, on yesterday, go, I don't even know we're going to have, I don't know if we're going to have an election, guys. I, I, I'm, it's, it's looking, you know, Slimmer and slimmer every day that we might not have an election because we got a border wide open. We don't know who the heck is in our country and we're we're aggressing and having aggressions with people all over. One of their loyalists could, you know, yell whatever they yell and. Boom. We got a whole another war going on. They could say those was Iranians. And then here we go. We're in World War Three. Listen, you know, you, you know, what's funny. Um, my grandmother called me today. It's not funny. She was crying, like literally mm. crying. She said, "Honey, I ran that attack to Israel, honey. It's 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 happening, honey. It's happening. She got some water and stuff. This mm-hmm. is really something. This is really something that even like the the average Joe people are like paying attention to. Yep. Well, because it I mean, didn't happen I, under Trump. I was literally it sitting didn't... today talking to the wife, and I was like. Well, and this was just a rule. You just don't attack Israel. If you attack mm-hmm. Israel, you understand the U.S. is more likely to come after you for attacking Israel than attacking the U.S. Like it was mm-hmm. just you just in the entire Western world. You're talking to England. You're you just don't attack Israel. That's that one little oasis in that area that Christians protect, you know, to 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 a, a, a fault. And uh, so um yeah, man, I, 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 I'm concerned too. I really was thinking, man, we make it out of March and we'll be okay. We'll have an election; it'll be all right. But because you know, that's you know, January. You know, we make it for through the first three months and nothing crazy to ramp up and to get it to where they were shut down an election by November. That's a lot. But man, well, I've been wrong before. <laughs> and, uh, so, um. We're coming up on our three and a half hours, uh, which is obviously longer than we try to do most of the time. Definitely want to uh, leave Pro to, to wrap it. I want to say my wrapping thing now. First of all, thank you, wrapping the show. Uh, first of all, Bryson, thank you so, so much for coming. Wow. Just thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you. Of course. You. It's such a great human being. Uh, and then uh, I got a special request, and that is, I, I only saw you do it once, but you did a great uh, Bible study on your Instagram lives. And uh, uh, it w- it was uh, uh, First Peter, I believe, and it was great. And Second I don't Peter. know if you- Second Peter, excuse me, uh, it was a couple weeks ago. Um, but man, I'm gonna ask you if you can find a time to do a couple of those. I know it takes a little while because I was like, you had different backgrounds, and I could tell you were trying to do other things. Yeah, but man, yeah. that's a blessing. It was such a blessing. Like I had just had a long day, you know, and I'd come home, and you know, you're checking your socials at the end of the day, which ugh, but you know, it's part of our business. Yeah. And and I got to see that, and I got to have a little impromptu Bible study right there with my man Bryson, and I appreciated yeah. that, and that was a blessing. Uh, I, I, and and it's just you you live your word. The one thing I need everyone to understand is I respect this man more than so many other people because he lives everything he says to the point of you think no one could really live like that, but he does. He lives Not- his word. It it it'll, it takes money out of his pocket. He pours oh, yeah. his own money, resources, and time into doing what he thinks is right. He chooses things that would quote unquote hurt a career to be a real Christian and and a real man standing ten toes. So my only request is throw a couple more Bible studies out as you have time yeah. because those are powerful and wonderful. Other yeah. than that, I wanted to thank you. I'll turn it over to Pro and let you guys wrap it. So yeah. Thank yes, you. Also, yes. also, I am not special. Anybody can do it. It's just uh, I mean. It's a process, but um, I mean, any, anybody could do it. I think a lot of people, you know, the reality is sin is fun. It tastes good. It feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would be lying to you if I told you that getting drunk with my friends wasn't, for, wasn't fun. It was fun. You know what I'm saying? But uh, for, oddly enough, I have way more fun now. I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, bro. I have way, it's the most craziest thing. I have way more fun now, bro. 
and uh, like traveling, talking to people about God, meeting just different people, bro. It's like you can still you can still have fun every day. You know what I'm saying? So way more fun. It's like the love too, man. The love is more real. The fun is more real. You know what I mean? Um, everything is just better. It was something you were saying earlier about being an artist. I think you're a better artist when you have a clear head and a a, a pure heart. You are a, oh, you yeah. are channeling everything around you better and and you're more in tune with god and all true art comes from god so i completely agree with you uh on that as well and then i'm sorry pro i'm gonna turn it back over to pro and and, and stop so my bad there so yeah it's all good man you know I, I understand this is a it's a great man you know and it's not often that you get to have him on your show and it's the first time you know you got you know vomit on your sweater already mom spaghetti you're nervous you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, and shout out to Tyson James. Just so you know, if Tyson ever wants to come on and kick it, man, he, we are wide open. We yeah, would man. love to have Tyson on. Shout out to Tyson James. That man's Tyson. a blessing as well. So yeah. Tyson, yeah, man. Tyson, my bro, bro. It's like it's so weird how similar me and him is. Like we uh we like we interested in the same things, boxing, music, the Bible. Then when I was at his house, we was punching each other in the face. It's uh it's lit. It's it's lit, bro. It's all the way lit, man. I, I appreciate it. First, first of all, you know, you mentioned them too. I'm going to wrap it because um, I had this question. I didn't get to, but I have to ask it because, you know, it needs to be asked before we uh, get up out of here. You know what I mean? Bro, you're a 2A to the end. You know what I mean? You are a gun-toting, Bible-toting man, right? Yes. You know, and uh, I I need to know. Um, there's another one that I'll ask you that question later on because I want to go deeper into that because you also have a wife that a lot of you know you got a, a partner in this fight of life. That's something that men, a lot of men, yearn for. You know what I'm saying? So congratulations on y'all union and y'all journey together, man, and and blessings on that. But having you know the two way and your pistol uh -huh. and your rifles and everything else. How has that been in your journey, especially, you know, you're Southern Christian, like I'm sure like, you know, I am. And one thing we hear from the Southern, especially the black ladies, what you need a gun for? You protected by God and God got you like in leaving. What has been your response to those people with oh, that? I mean, it's so many biblical responses, but um, <clears throat> I'll go with this one. The, the, most famous story, people miss the intricate details of it. Peter, well, you better cut, talk about this supper. Yeah, Pete, listen, Peter cutting the dude's ear off, right? Let's talk about it. Two things that has to be true in that context. Mm -hmm. but we, we, we already know this with other scriptures, but uh, all the people around Jesus were strapped. Fact. Fact number one. Fact number two. After Peter cut the man ear off, he didn't tell Peter to do away with the sword or to never bring it up again. He said to put it back in your sheath. Mm -hmm. He just said put it. He just said put it back in the holster. We outnumbered. We outnumbered. My man told everyone at the supper, and I'm see that's why I love you, love bro, because we're here. Because that's where I, when people say, you know, oh. Oh, uh, you shouldn't have a gun, this, that, and the third. Man, the last supper, Jesus wouldn't have died if everybody would have went and got strapped. Like he told everybody to go get strapped. He told them boys straight up, listen, if you got if you don't have a sword and you got money, go buy a sword. Sell your cloak and buy a sword. If you don't have money, sell yeah. your cloak and buy a sword. Okay. Which meant, hey, cuz get the strap. I don't care what go get the strap. Cause we gonna need it. They, but it's three swords right there, my lord. Oh God, I'm dead. Yeah, right, thank you. <laughs> Christians against carrying firearms. I mean, I, it's just like some. I, I, I don't, I don't know. They were taught that growing up. It's not biblical in any sense. There's no biblical backing for it. There's only biblical backing for the opposite of it. Even the Bible talks about if somebody ro uh, robs your house and you strike him and they die, you're good. Mm -hmm. I mean. So if all the disciples, if all the disciples had swords, you know, I, I mean, it's just, you know, what I'm saying, it's, 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 it's I mean, people need to I'm kind of glad they didn't. What well, with the whole thing of salvation, but yes, 
<laughs> but guess what? But it would like we only know the story of salvation as we know the story of salvation because that is what played out. The story of salvation salvation was still going to happen. It probably just would have happened in a different way. We just got to a point to where you know we have this point, but it it, it shows us to where now we have those people who are like, "Hey man, get your sword, protect your." He said, okay, we said two. Yeah, he said that is enough. He said that's enough because he said because they told him if it wasn't enough, let's just be real for a second. If it wasn't enough, he would have never told them to hey go buy one. And if you don't have the money to buy, trade your cloak listen, to buy. Listen, the, I, only, the only reason Jesus didn't want Peter to cut the dude ear off was because Jesus had already told them this had to play out this way. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, Jesus told them he can have an army of angels with swords at mm -hmm. any moment he wanted to. But he knew this specific thing had to play out. He never got angry at anybody having a sword around him. And all the disciples nope. always had swords around him. Yep. There's nothing wrong with arming yourself. Sons of I mean, Thunder were his the, security. Yeah, it's like the like, I mean, just, just think about it like this. Even in the Old Testament, right? What's it about David killing people? You think he killed people with what? His thoughts or something? It was a sword. He would he was smoking people with the sword. People people need to. I suggest people read the whole Bible from beginning to end, because you would have a completely different view of violence in general from a mm -hmm. biblical perspective. Mm -hmm. God killed Israelites in the Book of Numbers because they were scared to go conquer a land. Because he said they were too strapped, they had more people, and God killed the Israelites because they even were talking crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know, God prepared people hands for war. So, you know, honestly, from a biblical perspective, if you're not capable of violence, then I don't know how you can genuinely view yourself as a biblical man. Like all men in the Bible were very capable. You can't even be a king if you weren't capable of violence. <laughs> like, um, I mean, I was just suggest people read the Bible. I mean, that, that's it with that one. If people yeah. just read the Bible from scratch, you would never have a conversation about the the, the guns again. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there it is. As that's that's what I wanted for for the people who are lukewarm with it. This is a man who all the way, all the way, hot fire. All right, I'm hot fire with it. And he just gave you the true word, man. So listen, y'all, don't be scared. Jump in the Bible head first, gain your understanding, and um, find a self-defense class, you know, a firearm class to get yourself in and get trained and get prepared because the days are coming and you better go get a sword. Facts. Guys, well, thank you so man. much. I, I think that's a perfect place to pause it. Guys, thank you so, yes, so much. Bryson, where can they find you? I, I'm a Bryson fan now. I'm listening. I got to find <laughs> Bryson. Where's the best place to look you up? Um, Spotify, Apple Music, um, Pandora, Amazon Music, YouTube Music. Just type in Bryson Gray. My stage name is my real name. Um, B-R-Y-S-O-N-G-R-A-Y. Uh, anywhere you listen to music. You can say Alexa play Bryson Gray right now. <laughs> Somebody's Alexa just started playing Bryson Gray because they heard you say it. <laughs> <laughs> One, get into the word, two. No, I'm, all right. So, oh my God. <laughs> guys, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Want to shout out, uh, send a shout out to all our chatters. Uh, of course, LS, PT Pod is just me, everybody. There's a lot of you guys. Uh, guys, check it out. And then uh, maybe Wednesday, Bryson's going to do a watch along. With this movie, we can yeah. all tune in and watch him break down some directorial things and some commentary on on the 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 Bryson Gray Demon Slayer film. Uh, Pro, anything for the folks? Hey man, appreciate all my ringside rumblers that always pull up. Shouts out to everybody on Twitter who's watching. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm gonna always call it Twitter because I've known it to be Twitter longer than it's been X. So. It is what it is. But shouts out to all y'all who are uh, listening, um, watching live. I appreciate that. Hit the like button. Hit the share. Um, comment. Let us know what you think. Um, Bry Bryson, thank you so much, bros, for thank coming you. in. 
already, man. We're gonna do this again, and uh, we're gonna talk off on the backside. But um, October, I need you in Savannah, man. It's homecoming, Savannah State. Yeah, we got, we got something to do. We got we got some fun to have. So uh, we'll we'll set that up. And uh, I'm trying to do a Voltron assemble, man. I'm trying to I'm trying to turn up. I'm trying to turn <laughs> up for the now. We will two. be there. Speaking of that, yes, he's uh, a little picture on the screen of us three at the Grifties. So in real life, we've all three hung. True story. So boom. True story. Hey, look, y'all. That's my. That's me and my proud boy hoodie. Y'all see that? Real one. Right? <laughs> True that. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Uh, please tune in every Sunday. God bless you so much. Uh, good night. Can you hear me? Yeah. You 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 let these rappers make you jump the gun a little too quick. No, wait, say it again. Um, say it again. Say it again. You I, allow these rappers to make you jump the gun a little too quick. You might be right. You might be right. But, right. but you yeah. call me. Go ahead. I'll let you talk first. Oh, this is simple. That had that statement I had had nothing to do with you. It was referring to the people responding to me in the comment sections. When somebody said hit you up, I thought he meant hit you up for you to set up a debate. Oh, no, no. I was just, I think they said they just wanted you to pop on the, sh the show or something like that. I, I thought the way it sounded to me was you were calling me like the white version of BLM or something. And it's like, wait, now hold no, on. Dude. Like, I mean, I've been in your house. Like, we get along good. There's okay. never been a problem between us ever. So you, wait, so use logic real quick. Okay. This is, I mean, ba basic logic. Have I ever said something negative about you? Ever? Never, no. ever. No. You was you was at my house, right? That's right. I just wrote an article about you getting reinstated a few weeks ago. Ex yeah. Ex yeah. Ex exactly. And hold on. Not not only that, you weren't even part of the people that was responding to me on Twitter upset, were you? Well, I have people in my chat who apparently are part of those people. I don't know. Yeah, uh, no, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying you weren't though. No, weren't no, no. I wasn't saying anything about it. I did see what was oh, going okay. on. I want to talk about okay. the topic in general in a minute. We, we can talk, we, we can talk about the topic. My question is, is, so knowing all that, when logic, before you respond on Twitter, you should be like, is Bryson talking about me before you make a response? Because I obviously wasn't talking about you. Matter of fact, I said, why would I diss rap when the person said You that? did say that before right me? after that, right after I sent my tweet. You did say that. And I, I should have, I, I, well, I don't know what the time it came in. Um, but I think I hit mine before. Yours might have actually popped up before. But either way, uh, yeah, I could have waited for that that response before before I responded. Matter of fact, like I, you know, of course, I have no beef with you at all. Like I'm not. exactly, exactly. So the issue here is the Grippers are upset currently. As they get, they get upset. They get upset when people go against their narrative, and then they're trying to get everybody else upset at me with them. Well, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's. I think that you know. They probably there were probably some people trying to get me upset, but but the way it read, you know, I was tagged in and it was like the white version of BLM and, and this and that. And it's like, no, wait, hold on. We've had you on the show many times. I, I you know, that's not the no, that, that wasn't about you. Right, so, right. I understand, yeah. I understand that now. I understand that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Why I say and why I say that because all like and this is no disrespect to all grippers. Sure. Me, I respect consistency and people that are logical. So when I call out black on black crime, grippers literally sound the exact same way black people do when I do that. When, when you call out something about white people. So I said, if somebody wanted to debate, I would preferably not debate somebody that's overly emotional and like the white version of BLM. If I debate somebody, it got to be somebody logical. I, I don't, no, no, no disrespect. I'm a very busy guy and I don't have time to, like, unless I'm bored, I don't have time to debate with people that's just going to get emotional or scream. You know what sure. I'm saying? So, I, so no, that, that's what that was about. Yeah, I agree with that. But now, so I guess, I, and now that we settled that, of course, I have no beef with you at all. <laughs> I just want to be clear. It was just like, oh, wow. They said, oh, look, he's talking shit. They did say that in the chat. And I was like, why? Why is Bryce like, I don't even understand. And then when you look at the tweet, it does seem like you're talking shit. And I'm like, it, it, it doesn't it only do that if you don't know the context. Well, if you don't on. think, yeah, you're right. I was ready to jump the gun probably a little too. Yeah, quick. somebody said somebody said you call me a gimmick rapper, and I'm like, bro, nobody, I haven't even said any like first off, I you got a great rapper. gimmick. <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't I, mean that as an insult <laughs> necessarily. No, uh that's, that's I mean, just to be a hundred, that's an insult to an artist regardless. And then that's true. listen, Grippers, 
Glippers are trying to create drama where there is none because they're upset. They're emotional right now. And, I, and, and let me say this, and I don't care who defend it. The difference between me and all these other people that defend it, first off, let's get something straight. Everybody, every other popular person that supported Nick in any type of way that's super popular, they only did it to gain something from Nick every single time. That's why every single person turned on the Groypers. I'm one of the only people with a following that's not Kanye that in any situation has defended Groypers inside of TPUSA, two TPUSA faces. You know what I'm saying? But I will never do that again. Let's well, be clear. Nick Fuentes, I will always defend Nick. Matter of fact, if y'all asked Nick, last week I had to talk to Nick on the phone because people were paying paying influencers to do a whole crap campaign about Nick Fuentes. I'm the one to call Nick and let him know that was happening because I saw it happening. So I'm always defend Nick because I view Nick as a friend. But Grubbers as a whole, I, I I don't I don't I don't I don't like punks. I don't like punks and soft. Well, that's so, the let's... well, that's the conversation that that I was that that I was kind of wanting to have. And obviously, like I said. You welcomed me into your house. You had an interview. Uh, you know, fiance. I don't think y'all are married just yet. Uh, and my, my, my. say what? It's my fiance. We get married. Right. I just got married re- real recently myself. Uh, and thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and that's why I was just like, what? What is even going on? Um, but first off, let's talk about the delineation. And of course, I'm here on cozy.tv. I stuck by Nick. Um, you know, I guess you wouldn't say I would have nothing to gain from it, but, um, uh, you know, I, I haven't, uh, jumped off the, the, the bandwagon either. You know, I've been here the whole time, hold down cozy.tv actually. Uh, um, and so like, you know, I would put, I would put my bona fides up there with, with, I went, with I went, most I like, like this. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that as insult. No, I, I'm just saying that as a defense of myself. Um, but you delineated, Groiper from Nick Fuentes, and I would just wonder if you could expound upon that. And we have as much time, like I don't like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 simple. So I don't like. I view Nick as a friend, literally. You see what I'm right. saying? Right. So, yeah, I understand. Sure. Yeah. So when I defend when I de- when I defend Nick, I'm gonna defend Nick at any standpoint. Period. So a lot of people get mad at me, even behind the scenes. I get sure. mad, I get asked about Nick. Why do you defend Nick Fuentes? Nah, I stopped. Even when the Gorpers was mad at me, I was defending Nick because somebody said, why are you defending Nick? Cat boy, gay, blah, 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 blah all this stuff. Sure. But, I was still him. but that's, because, that, that's because I know Nick. So but, you, out of Jason, but I want to say you're ahead. in these circles that other people don't get into. No, well, I'm not, no, this is not the brag about me defending Nick. I'm making 